Hello and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy Podcast, episode 308 for the week of May 9th, 2017. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who's here with me this week? Brock Sager. Nick Fury Jr. Bryce. Toby. And Charlie. How's it going, everyone? Okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> unless something changes, this is going to be pretty much an all Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 episode. So, if you have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in theaters now, you should probably not listen to this episode unless you don't care about spoilers, because we're going to spoil everything Shit throughout the course of, of this. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if we have time, we may talk about some other stuff at the end of the episode, but I don't expect we will. I think we're going to have a lot to say about Guardians. So, before... We uh, before we started recording here, I chose a number at random and chose who was going to start the talk here. And I think we have to start, of course. Very lucky we're starting with Charlie. Oh, thank God! A plus, ten out of ten. Wait, when do we Four pick numbers? The, the most rational person of all. When did we pick number? Um, I did, and we're gonna oh, go. So we did. We're gonna go around the circle. Uh, circle. Just so if if this is your first of our, if this <laughs> is your first uh, regular uh, maybe movie review episode of ours. We're very free form. We spoil the hell out of everything. We bitch complain to each other for two we hours. We make no sense whatsoever. We make no sense. We yell about a bunch of garbage. Um, we'll try to explain the plot of the movie, I guess, through the review. We kind of let the start at the beginning and go, but the, 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 our talk just goes off in random tangents. It's all pretty the much time, predicated so. on you having seen the movie, so you don't need much in the way of plot re- right. formation. Right, right, right. Uh, but reformation. I think that's right. I don't think. So. Uh, if we you don't like we hearing can, about, if you don't like hearing about um, box office numbers, uh, go fuck yourself. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later <laughs> in the episode as well. I uh, do it last. I'm going to do it last because right. uh, I like numbers. He... I like sales. I like numbers. Wait, wait for the movie? Yeah. What yeah, yeah. does it matter if it is at beginning or end? No, that's fun to do. It's fun to do at the end. Uh, so, and and we'll give some. Review score or rank it in some way because that's what people love. Charlie, why don't you start us with Guardians? Well, why don't why don't you actually let's start how me, you, and Bryce saw this movie. Let's let's do that. Oh God, we had three. Dude, that is irrelevant. What is I don't the, think so because we term? had Blake. Three, what is the legal term? We had three. Not leading the witness. Full extra days before the rest of. The no, no, no. Inside. We had three very different experiences. The movies that, that revolved around various. But you guys watched it together at the same movie. Theater. Weird events. Right no. next to each other. Me, Charlie, and 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 uh, Bryce, and actually Kevin Sharp was going to be here tonight, but unfortunately couldn't be here. I, I was hoping to have him uh, here, uh, but he, he may come on later and talk about it. Um, Brock had a different experience, uh-huh. and Toby, you had a different. We all very different movie going experiences. But, but oh yeah, we, it's called uh, racing down fucking uh, De Anza Boulevard, hoping not to get a ticket yeah. for you to text me. Oh no, they locked the door, so yeah, you can't yeah, make it. yeah. Yeah, we got to go to an early screening. Myself, Bryce, and uh, Charlie. Uh, we talked about this, I think, a little bit last week, yeah, we but did. but uh, you guys <laughs> like that theater? I mean, oh the. I don't remember hating that theater before we went to the screening. <laughs> Dude. Now, maybe it's because I don't normally sit with you in the back row, and I'm kind of convinced that they just they get lazier and lazier, so they move like the seats they actually clean more and more forward, figuring who the fuck's going to sit in the back row Wait, anyways. Did you, were you in theater 12? No, I was in 7. Okay. No, it was filthy when we were there. Like, I don't think they cleaned the chairs filthy. in my screening either. No. Yeah, but like I'm used to them... Clearing out the theater, well, we sending some people in, do yeah. the... They went to the same theater? The cleaning, but, like, there was popcorn all over the seats, the floor <sighs> was sticky, it was... Yeah, the floor was really sticky. It was, like, at the end of the concert, me walking yeah. out. Like, <laughs> Kevin Kevin ha- had me go get a bunch of paper towels so we could put them on the floor so his feet didn't stick to the floor. Well, he also had the bad experience with gum. Ew. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He stepped in gum. Took off his shoe to clean it off with the extra paper towels and then stepped back and gum in his sock. He's still eating, dude. <laughs> Look, there's nothing that says old man more like starting your movie review with like how shitty the theater was. <laughs> you were given free fucking tickets to this movie. But I think and that's all you could talk about is that a well, no. And they held it at the most like easy easy access movie theater in the area. I and think it was Mercado. And you're, here you are complaining about the ambiance of your free ticket I think movie theater. I think it, I think it may play slightly into the experience I had watching the movie because the theater was filthy, uncomfortable, hot as balls, 
Like, it was a terrible you screen. Should, you, but you chose 3D. to sit in the furthest back. And That's there's something to be what Charlie is. There's something to what Charlie is saying. About, like, sit there. I don't think that the furthest back row gets as cleaned as well as maybe the front row or the middle rows. I don't know, but whatever. And then, like, the hottest. Okay, well, you, you chose the furthest back right next to the projector. Like, I've never. Theaters it's, always warm up and, and Bryce, the, the hot I've seen air is always going to rise. Like, Bryce, I've seen literally a thousand movies in the movie theater. Well, probably not quite that many, but a, a good number of theaters. I always sit in the back row, except in very rare situations. I've never had a movie going experience like this. This was easily the worst experience I've had. Oh, I could give you worse theaters to join. Uh, I'm just or saying that. So I'm actually worse. just too busy going. It's far you know, cheaper to go to those. I, I'm kind of loving, regardless of what Ryan talks about. You find a reason to. I'm just berate him for whatever he. Nobody talks about. is going to call into this podcast and be like, "Wow, I'm surprised Higgins well, was this, complaining about like, was it, something." Was it hot in the theater, Bryce? This was a retail. No, it was in, not hot in the theater. This it was, was a it press was, screening. It was an an average temperature movie. This like, was a nobody's pr- complaining about the temperature except for Higgins. This was a press screening, and they put Actually, even the I did shittiest watch one movie that was fucking hot, a sweating entire movie. I could not yeah. enjoy it. Which one was it? Inferno. No, <laughs> fucker. When I went to see X Men uh, Apocalypse last year, the theater like just did not have the AC on. And yeah, it was fucking that's what happened hot. to me once too. It's fucking really annoying. And then they told me like the next time, oh, you could have complained that day and get yeah. a refund ticket. I'm oh like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Okay, so this is the bunch of, of your review. Yeah, so, yeah. two of you. Yeah, we no. just lost all the new it's people really that tuned in today so, for so it. Just so you, just so you oh guys God. know, uh, I went to a screening at Valco, and the only thing I was worrying about was the power going out. It didn't, and it was nice. Well, Brock went, and I was supposed to go on. <laughs> Thursday, yeah, I when I got horribly sick, I had a terrible case of vertigo. That's and was, not the theater's fault, by No, it's not the theater's fault. But no, I was it's gonna, also not Guardian's fault, by I was the way. Yeah. I think you're going to try was, to spin it that way. I was unable to go see it again. I really wanted to see it's it again before Groot's we talked. It's not fault either. <laughs> but I'm going to go see it on Thursday, so I may have a slight update, or maybe not. Uh, after after the Thursday, yeah, I do want to see you it again. Freaked me the fuck out on Thursday when you called me and said, oh, "I'm not." I'm like, dude, I need to see this movie. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I got I got a horrible case of vertigo, but no, I. Look for the shrugging face tweet this coming Thursday when Higgins sees it for the second time, <laughs> immediately Char- after the movie, before he even talks to his friends. Charlie. So, to kind of reiterate the movie-going experience a little bit, came out of oh, the yeah. movie. We need more yes. reiteration of the experience. Thanks. Came thanks. out of the movie, immediately kind of grouped back up as we always do, right after seeing the movie, to sort of talk shit for a few minutes before talk heading home shit or talk and there's, shop. there's this just this uncomfortable silence between all of us when no. we come what? out of the theater come on. The seriously o- the only yes. uncomfortable silence was Wait, we because we because of the movie or because of theater experience no because we were all waiting to go outside and one of come us ha- on. no one of us has a little girl's bladder and it was Ryan Higgins and so we were all waiting outside going hm, 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 we can't really talk about it cuz all of us are oh, because here the yet. master is not here we don't have a quorum <laughs> so we can't talk about it so and meanwhile, Higgins has like this scowl, <laughs> unsurprisingly, and Kevin Sharp is like, you know, ooh, ooh, ooh. too polite to to, to disagree with the Higgins uh, just, to his he's face. Just wondering he's, how, <laughs> he's, just, he's just wondering how he's going to burn his socks when he gets home. Even though, yeah, exactly. Well, that that's probably true too. Even even though he has differing opinions than Ryan's, he's just too polite of a gentleman. Um, hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he's 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 too polite. Oh, okay. I know, okay, I know that okay. he's going to listen to this. Okay, okay. So anyway, so the only like awkward silence was because that we fucking knew that you were going to just be no, 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 wh- no. What no, can no. I? What can I say? Charlie, on Charlie gets to start this. Charlie, we came out and we started talking oh, you about the movie. This motherfucker. No, yeah, <laughs> no. you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah that's you did. Okay. For Eventually, Charlie. I actually Based finished my story. Charlie, yeah, you or start this. it, Charlie. <laughs> So my initial reaction to this movie, I actually did see it twice, so I'll, I'll go into a little more detail. But my initial reaction is there were certain elements of the movie that I could not quite decide if were going to bother me more or not. Sort of like calling Ego a celestial just because that has a very specific meaning. And I actually realized, because I went back and watched Guardians 1 over the weekend – that we've actually seen a celestial in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they just collector yeah. scene when he's yeah. he's going over. So again, that kind of reiterates again that Which, it hold on, bothered enough, me a when little. I'd review that that's going to come back into play. That they called him a celestial that bothered me a little bit because of the meaning it typically has. Now, mind you, the other reaction I kind of had to the movie was from the very beginning. I'm like, 
and this is what Ryan's going to hate. This is what he's going <laughs> to fucking complain about. <laughs> Hey, my, I mean, hey, Charlie. So, did you also have a reverse reaction going? That is actually what Toby's gonna love. That is what Toby's gonna love. Ryan will hate it. Toby will love it. I didn't think that far ahead, apparently. No. But <laughs> a large part of that is, I think you'll talk about what you love and drop it. Ryan will bring it up for the next six months. Oh, it was oh six, six months. months. Get three, a fucking hold of yourself. Three, three fucking years, man. Oh, well, and no. counting. Six months is when, we'll, well, no, we'll have another Marvel movie. So about three months, okay. then we'll have another Marvel movie and then there'll be something new to bring up. No, oh, he's for, still fucking oh, like... Spider-Man looks so bad. Hey, oh, no, come God. on! <sighs> it's only two months from now. I can't wait to get this shit over with. Charlie, on a scale... I think you do this on purpose. You just know. No. You know what triggers meanger. 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 Oh. <laughs> My name is Toby. I'd be a little <laughs> leprechaun. Okay, so... <laughs> Oh man, she's showing my shit list too now. So, 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 uh, Charlie, we'll, we'll let's, let's get your list. kind of initial reaction, and then we'll, so, we'll kind of go around, and then we'll talk about plot elements I, we liked. And I thought they did ego amazingly, other than calling him a slut. Like I never thought they could do sort of a living planet, especially in that kind of setting, and do it as well as they did. If and just left it out- did make me really, really sad in a way that we don't have Surfer and Galactus and that kind of stuff, just because. There are definite stories that come to mind with Ego that we would never see. But I guess it doesn't matter now because they blow him up. If they but, just left that one line out of the movie, would it have changed things for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. talking more of like a like a macro sense, not like yeah. a specific things you yeah, didn't yeah, like. But, but, but like, like, like overall, what was a huge thought? deal. Yeah. What if they yeah. never said that? Would that change things? I, I mean, it, it would have made me happier. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, what if he just called? Okay. Well, uh, I'm, the I, find that, I mean, I just find that totally. Like, who cares if you call him a celestial or not? Like, it's totally meaningless. Uh, yeah, do, I'm saying, like, like on a film level, like, 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 what's your overall thought here? Ignore, like, ignore, like, little. So specific. it was not as good as the first Guardians. Like, I, I didn't necessarily expect it to be, but I do kind of feel like there were a number of times where I kind of didn't feel like they needed a punchline where a punchline was added. There were just certain scenes where it's like sometimes the jokes work better than others, but it felt like they almost went out of their way to add punchlines to every single scene. Like the penis one? Like all of them. (laughs) Why? Why would he be thinking about the penis one? So we can no, do more. We can, we can give a, 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 a ranking or grade or a place in our Marvel Cinematic Universe scale down but, at the end. Think about but that. All that, all that being said, I did like the movie. I actually thought it was much better on my second viewing. Yeah. I think just because... Different expectations. Different expectations. And I just kind of... Sometimes it's easier to shut off your mind watching it the second time than yeah, watching yeah. it the first time. And it was definitely more enjoyable for me on the second viewing. Okay. And it was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to go this way. No, you got to go next, but just yeah. make sure you shut Bryce and Toby's mics off so we can actually get through it. Yeah, I was going to go this way. What? but Oh, I because Higgins Charlie. didn't interrupt Charlie at all. Yeah. He said with rolling eyes I, for I the interrupt, audio I, listeners. I interrupted Charlie only once this time. I interrupted twice. nicely. Um <laughs> So if you did listen to the Geekbox post earlier this morning, you heard some of my reaction, although I'll talk, talk more about it here. Um, so let's just get this out of the way first. I didn't hate this movie, all right? But I did have some major, major problems with this movie. Uh, no, no surprise to anyone who's listened to this podcast. I have not been so hot in the last couple Marvel movies. I felt they've got pretty far away from uh, the characterization and the quality they had in the first two phases uh, and and of and of really, I, I don't know if this is just because the Marvel guys aren't involved anymore, or yeah, I don't know. I, I think it seems like it's since the exodus of the creative. Like, Wait, are we in input. phase three now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, this is, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly why this is the case. Um, but I've found the last few movies have had a very strange um reliance on comedy where there doesn't need to be, like Charlie said, and. I felt this movie took all the wrong lessons from the first movie and doubled down on it uh, instead of actually trying to make a, 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 a surprisingly quality film with great characterizations and, and both comedic elements and, and really dark tones at the same time. This took uh, 
uh, Big Bang Theory Family Guy approach of constant references to to annoying stuff to to just every scene has to have a punchline regardless of how serious it is um i i i they took they took a, a deeply complex character in drax from the first movie and turned him into uh the butt of the joke. He, they, they they turned him into a retard in this movie, like full blown. Full, they went full retard in this movie with Drax, and I was super excited to see what they were going to do with Mantis. And she was pretty much a moron through this entire movie. She had elements like at the very end where she kind of saves the day a bit, but man, it's like they took the five funny minutes that Groot had in the movie, and they said, "Oh, this is the stuff people like. Let's make the entire movie that." When the reason we like those moments is because they are unexpected they are he, well it's that scene in the in the first guardians where he takes out all you those guys that talked about not interrupting him <laughs> wasn't it literally nobody else has talked <laughs> yeah. until you now. guys can all you jump in all you want basketball it yeah. was because i'm being quiet we're being no. quiet and listening to higgins yeah. you were the one I that said totally listening nobody to you, by the way. The, <laughs> you I'm, just did it I'm twice adding, i'm just I'm not looking at you i said i said you guys could so thanks thanks for your feedback on higgins go watch basketball i said you guys we were you feel free to jump in if you have something to say um but yeah, I, I there were awesome moments in this movie, and I felt the back third of the movie was much, much better than the first two thirds. But I, I felt the first hour and change of the movie was just completely nothing scenes that had no connective tissue that were just jokes for joke for for no reason. So a couple of like like wicked violent scenes that were then just kind of laughed away. Um, uh, and I mean, it, you start with the baby Groot scene, right? And to me, that's just the opening credits, and that is just the whole movie in a nutshell. Is that people like dancing Groot in the last five seconds of the movie, and that's a funny scene. So let's make that the entire movie. And it's like, no, that's not why it's funny. It's funny because it's not the way the rest of the movie was. And I felt the entire movie was like this, and it was. And it drove me nuts. Now, there were, like I said, there were a couple awesome scenes, and we'll definitely talk about some of that later. But overall, man, super disappointed in this movie. And I think I liked it. I was so disappointed because I give Guardians of the Galaxy an A. The first movie is an A, straight up. It's either my second or third favorite of the Marvel Cinematic movies. There's, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. I was so excited for this movie. It just wasn't what I wanted. I wanted something so much more serious and so much more in line with the first one, and I felt they just went off in such a such a disappointing family guy, just just references and jokes, and I I, I really I was really disappointed with it. Now I'm excited to see it again because of the movie going experience. Maybe and my expectations are very different. Maybe I'll like it like Charlie, you know, better the second time, but. I, I really wanted a different movie with this, and I am terrified of Thor and Avengers Two or uh, Avengers Three because I'm so worried that this comedy that's overtaken the last few movies is oh just going to continue, and 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 I, I and I hate it. I don't want it. I don't want everything to be Batman v Superman, Bryce. But I'm worried that Marvel said, "Hey, look, Batman v Superman scared the hell out of people, so we have to like triple down on the comedy." Didn't you literally <clears throat> say? Before Ant Man came out, I'm really scared for Ant Man. I and, was, and didn't you literally say before Doctor Strange, I'm really scared for Doctor Strange? Well, Ant Man because it lost the create, it lost Edgar Wright. It had difficulties in uh, in production, but Ant Man ended of which, up. By the way, were super popular and but, successful. But Ant Man ended up being uh, a, a, a very good surprise again. Like the original Guardians, I think my expectations were low. It kind of could do whatever it wanted. It it was funny but it wasn't an outright comedy there there were there were the sidekick guy i'm blanking on his name um he was wicked funny but it wasn't like just comedy the little hispanic guy yeah it, tells the stories. yeah 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 it wasn't just comedy after comedy after comedy after comedy after bad joke after bad joke after bad joke after 80s reference after 80s reference just non-stop my point is how many but dr strange i was very disappointed in again i didn't hate it but I did not like Doctor Strange as much as it's pretty low on my list. But how because movies, of the really bad forced comedy they put into this movie that didn't need it. How many movies, Marvel movies, in a row do you get to say I'm really worried for the next Marvel movie insert here? Oh, there's only going to be like four more for like four in a row now. 
Well, we only have four more to come. Yeah, I mean, I, I am. Even, what does that even mean? That doesn't at all. I mean, Spider Man's. I'm, I'm worried about Spider Man because it's not made by Disney. It's made by Sony, and fucking they suck. No, so, but, but but you said okay after the chink in the armor, you were worried about Ant Man. Well, it might be more commercially and critically successful. Yeah, I, everyone you was. Were, you were worried about Doctor Strange, and you. Used I this thought Doctor Strange was this podcast. Like, I don't think I was. I don't remember being worried about Doctor. Strange. You were worried about Doctor Strange, and and okay. it ended up being commercially and critically successful. Sure, you, enough, you were if worried, Guardians is going to make a billion dollars. You were worried about Guardians because of Baby Groot, and it ends up being commercially and of, critically successful. I don't care. And now you're worried about Thor. So how many movies in a row were you going to say I'm worried about the next Marvel I movie? I don't care how commercially successful they are. I care about how I like them, and in these, but in you this case, like uh, any of them. That's a fair enough statement. I, I, Bryce. I could pull up my list. Something like 70% of these movies, I give a B- minus to an A+. Plus. There's only a handful that are Cs in Iron Man 3, which I fucking hate. That's the only, Iron Man 3 is the only one of the Marvel Cinematic movies that I actually dislike. I don't hate Civil War or Age of Ultron or Guardians 3. I, just, I have big problems with them, but I do not hate them. There was a Guardians 3? So, or I, Guardians 2, I mean, sorry. So uh, I also think that there's a differentiation... Worth being mentioned that, um, and Ant Man's easily one of my favorites. Ant Man's top five, right? So I'm addressing more of the fact that uh, this podcast is a platform, and you have a wide audience. And you mentioning every single movie that you're worried about the next one is going to broadcast a certain feeling, and you sort of dismissing these movies because you're not so. Everyone the- on the forum thinks I'm a moron. Like they all disagree with me. <laughs> like no one cares what I say. They listen, but they don't. They don't agree with me. I love the. They just want to hear what you're going to say next. What is it? Just like why they listen to Bryce. Yeah. What is it? Um. Anyway, I, I hear what you're saying. But as you said in the movie last night, or I'm sorry, the fucking movie, the uh, the Geek Box last night, the movie ended. Everybody stood up. It was yeah. almost a standing ovation. Yeah. So like, and then they went home 99... and watched Big Bang Theory on their TiVo and ah, laughed and laughed off. at that too. Ah, oh, fuck off! Man. You made that joke last night. You I know make, I did. I know. Make it again tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. that's okay. Just like Guardians of the Galaxy, just keep making the same jokes over and over. Son of a okay. Dick. Um, so I guess what my point is that Baby like so this funny. platform that uh, you use to to repopulate your theory, when apparently by your own admission, ninety nine percent of people like this movie to the one person that doesn't I think it has like an 89 fan rate a fan on, on Rotten Tomatoes which is, is good yeah, yeah. by your own good. volition everybody in the theater loved it and well, I mean we, we went yeah did you I mean, but you're headlining this podcast with a shrug face and like oh you know C plus did you give it uh, yeah give it a C plus like when I walked in the next day after they watched it he did come out with the shrug face and he goes hey I don't know about this and then and, and even Charlie didn't freaking say it was Charlie freaking... Charlie did not walk out of the theater and was like that was awesome when Charlie doesn't do that I get worried that was like the second thing you told me no, I know I'm, I'm telling you Charlie and I were both walking on eggshells because you had to stick up your ass coming no, out of the theater no what? I so, especially with comic book movies, I I loved if it. I Higgins. walk out of a theater, and there's elements in it where I'm like, you know, I don't like the direction they went with this, this, and this. It takes me a while to determine how much I don't like. Yeah, that, Charlie. Those elements. Yeah, Charlie said. Most of the time, I can kind of go, you know what, whatever. But when we left, Charlie but, said he needs some time to kind of process it because there was stuff. He, there was stuff he had some questions about or, or wasn't sure about. Fair enough. So we could do some favorite scenes or stuff we would like to change. We got a bunch of questions about this, but uh, we'll do that on the next round through Brock. Mm-hmm. What do you think? And you brought your kid too. Yeah. What do you Bernie. think? What did my son think? Yeah. What Bernie think? He like? Well, he fell asleep. He, he fell asleep like halfway through. Okay, it. So he's a baby. That's yeah, fine. he's he was he's five. So, um, uh, I think overall it's uh, so I, I had heard a little bit of your dislike of it. Um, I, I didn't I, spoil no, anything. You me. didn't spoil anything, but I, you know, I, I got your general dislike of it. You know, Tuesday. Again, I Ho- wouldn't. Say, well, who hold cares on. about that? What's your opinion? I'm getting there. All right. Jesus. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. He's setting the scene. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to set it up, like the, right, you right, know, right. like Bryce does every fucking time he talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, no, because you had had such a shitty experience, like with the actual theater. Yeah. I was like. I, I'm like okay, 
he either but you like go to that theater. I've been to Mercado before, so I know what he's talking about. Valcos has has his issues too yeah. these days. That's ah, fine. Um, but so going into it, I was like, all right, I don't have. I'm just going in. I'm going to watch Guardians with my son, and I was hopefully going to go with you and Leanne, yeah, but that yeah. didn't happen. Uh, but Lane showed oh, you up. And Lane. Yeah. Lane was there, and uh, a coworker of mine, and he brought his daughter because his daughter loves Chris Pratt, and he was cool dad for bringing her uh-huh. to it, to the show. How old is your daughter? <clears throat> Teen, or she's a oh, teenager. Yeah. Um, so overall, I, it was entertaining. I liked it. There were elements that I thought were completely, nearly shit. Um, there were things I thought were fucking amazing and awesome. Um, my personal opinion of it is it felt a lot like, um, like at least structure wise to the film, like how it plays out very empire ish empire, empire strikes back where we have this big stuff that happens at the beginning. And then what, what was the of, joke? What was the joke I made in the geek box last night? What? I don't know. I didn't Why are you smiling so much? No, wait for Bryce to see if he heard it. I did hear it, but I don't I, want to say it. I have forget it. You, you you said that it was, but was it? No, no. Was it you or was it Adam that said it? it you said it was no empire. It was. It was more like. A, but it was, it was more, more like, like Return of the, the Clones. Oh, you said it was Attack of the Clones, yeah. and the two, the uh, other Ryan, Ryan and Adam had a shit fit. Yeah, Adam almost killed me. <laughs> yeah. So by the way, that's the most fucking disingenuous shit that you've said in a while. But I guess I'll get to that. <laughs> so anyway, attack of the fucking clones. Fuck you. So so so, so, so structure wise, it was it was a lot like Empire, where we had this big huge thing happening at the beginning, um, and all this actiony stuff, and then we kind of slow it down, and we see separate, you know, these two groups, you know, because they split up at some point. Yeah, they yeah. split up, and then they come back together at the end, just like they did in Empire. And then Empire has this nice huge thing. Is it really that hard? Luke went off to fucking train with Yoda, I and mean, everybody else went in the Falcon with that worm really and the asteroid. Get, I mean, they get back together in like the last five seconds of Empire. They don't really, they don't really like come together. But that everyone culminates in Cloud City, so everyone's coming back to Cloud City, just like everybody's culminating on Ego here. I mean, like it, 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 it's the same thing. Uh, I need to go save Leia. I need to go save. <laughs> like, it's pretty much the okay. same thing. I mean, the thing is, time wise, it's slightly different. But again, the structure is pretty much there in the sense that all the cool yes. stuff, <laughs> whatever. Sorry, um, you know, I can understand. You're not sorry, I can understand like your Attack of the Clones reference because Attack of the Clones did suffer a lot from this stuff's happening. I was and just calling it a bad movie, but I didn't think well, it was yeah. a bad movie. I was mostly just being an asshole. Yeah, you know, this is true too. Um, you know, I, 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 I had. I thought it was visually stunning, so I was glad I saw it on the on the big screen. Oh yeah, um, you know you could definitely tell Marvel was like, "Oh, people like Guardians, let's pump up the CG." Well, there's actually a question. Um, I, I wonder what did the first one cost versus the second? Because I think Guardians Two was two hundred million. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, my, my from what my son saw, he liked it. Um, so I think it it's definitely going to hit that mainstream. Um, oh yeah, oh, I mean, audience. Regardless of its did. issues, dude, it made it made more than half its half its um, domestic opening weekend. Okay. Yeah, so Guardians One was a hundred. Oh, Guardians One was one hundred seventy. For some reason, I didn't think it was that high. Yeah, Guardians Two was two hundred. So mm. yeah, it did. It did. Oh, it did. Oh, something like God, like fifty percent more its opening weekend than Guardians One. Yeah, yeah. no. I mean, obviously, it's huge. No. So, so huge hit. To me, the biggest thing about that box office is after Avengers, like every subsequent movie, I kind of feel like cashes in on characters mm. from Avengers and like bring in Black Widow or Iron Man. And Guardians is the one case where it's still sort of standing on its own, mm. like completely. Well, I think that I think that uh, um, I mean, I did suffer a little from Charlie's. Um, oh, Ryan's going to hate that. Ryan hated that. Ooh, Ryan ooh. hated that. So, you know, I, I, I did say that. No, Toby, I didn't see any parts that you liked. Um, but, uh, I mean, overall, I, I, it was enjoyable. Was it as good as the first Guardians film? No. Is it a top-rated Marvel film? No. Um, but is it entertaining and a good a good watch? Yeah. You know, that's... For me, it's, it's uh, you know, for the things that I found wrong with it, which we, we'll get into later for specifics. Um you know, overall, I, I, I had a good time, uh, you know, in the theater. You know, I'm, one, I'm you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to go again in the theater, but I'm excited to get it on Blu-ray and watch it again. 
you know, I'm going to have to look this up. I, I had read something that James Gunn was kind of being given the keys to the Marvel space stuff to just kind of do his own – kind of his own set of movies, mm-hmm. um, kind of disconnected from the rest of the Marvel cinematic movies. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the accuracy I mean, of that. that, that, that I'll could, see if I can that, find that That article. could be the case. They're going to um, do the analyze. Why is it called analyze? <laughs> Please say that word over and over for your part <laughs> of the review. <laughs> Dude, you know that's going to be on the quote. Annihilation? Annihilation. (laughs) Annihilation? (laughs) I I don't think they're doing anything. It's, I mean, yeah. No. No, we wish. Well, Bryce. One out of the the people. The people need to hear the five of us. The people need to hear the truth, Bryce. (laughs) I thought I was being truthful. No, I'm just saying. The the, the people's truth. No, 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 no. Um, I'm I'm not going to deviate too far. Although, okay, look. There's a couple things. First of all, there's some serious fucking old man shit going on with this review of the movie theater before you see the movie going on here um, in terms of coloring their like opinions of the movie. Second of all, um, um, that was a gnat, by the way, that was attacking you. I think that it was a bloodthirsty mosquito. <laughs> um, bloodthirsty? Ryan, Ryan trained them. Okay, look, the, the other main thing is that this movie suffers the most of out of everything from expectations um i've said it in other movies and i'm starting to feel it just more and more exponentially so with with sequels um is that this movie so guardians one is one of my top two or three marvel movies um and i think that i'm in good company saying that and the problem is that there is literally no way they make Every well, anybody happy with the sequel? There, like, it took everybody so much by surprise. Spoiler alert: Deadpool two won't be as good. Yeah. Um, it's just because like these movies are like capturing lightning in a bottle. They're gonna have a sequel, um, because they're still gonna be good, but there's just no way that it'll be as good as the original. Um, and I know a lot of people, you know, like the uh, like this one as much as the original, so. You know, sorry, I'm not sorry. I, I I disagree. Number one was just so good in terms of that whole um, kept capturing the moment and you know doing everything just right. Uh, that uh, like an, that there's no like, way that like this an impromptu dance party. Oh God, <coughs> X Men Blue, fuck you. Um, that there's just no way that this movie was going to be able to to you know capture those same elements in the same way. Um, that said, I love this movie and. There's a lot of fucking hate for shit that you had to have seen coming a mile away. You don't like Baby Groot? What the fuck is wrong with you? He is literally tailored to be, like, enjoyable. And, you know, if you don't like him because you thought he was in the movie too much, that's your own fault because it's people like you that loved him so much in the fucking first movie that he's even in this movie. And, by the way, you can stop fucking complaining, because you will never see him again in the cin- Oh, God, Brock's leaning over. What do you want to say? I'm wondering what the fuck's on that screen. I'm not even paying attention. Weren't you just about. throwing shade at us for watching basketball? Yeah. You leaning over towards me to watch I basketball? I saw all these, like, letters going by. I was like, what the fuck is That's that? That's because it's called TV. So, anyway, the fucking Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was a great movie. It was not as good as the first movie, in my opinion, but, you know, it, it, it never could be. There were some things that I didn't like. Um, I thought that the uh, the one hundred percent jokes <laughs> of the movie, in terms of blanketing the whole thing with jokes, you know, I would never say that it's bad. But it, there were some moments where it was like uh, maybe there could have been a, a heavier moment um, that didn't need levity. They made sure that there was levity in all aspects of the movie. Nebula should never tell another joke. The Nebula stuff. I love the ne- Gamora's uh, sister. No, I love the Nebula stuff. So kind of rub me. Go really fuck bad. yourself. Uh, Wait, where was the joke of her? She just had some deadpan line at the end of She's every scene. She have was a deadpan in, line, but it was like a joke every time. Every time, not every time, but most of the time. And I, you know, uh, Nebula was definitely different than she was in, in the first movie. Yeah, there were some things. Okay, wait, wait. Let me go back. So about the Groot thing. Uh, where was I? Fuck you if you didn't like Groot. That's about where I was. Um, can, can I can I tell you a specific thing I didn't like about Groot? Baby Groot? I already know everything, but tell the listeners. Well, you have the dancing scene at the end of Guardians 1, right? Right. So you turn that into a 
five minute credit sequence, right? Right. And Obscuring that- what was probably great action. Oh my baby fucking Groot. god! Hold it's, on, it's a what? throwback to that Spider-Man uh, Stan Lee's cameo. Wait, huh? what? It is. No, uh, but the Stan Lee cameo in Spider-Man Two when Spider-Man was fighting fucking in the background and Stan Lee was doing his shit is exactly the same setup. Okay, I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. But um, I believe you. Unlike Ryan again, <laughs> like Drax, they take a character who is never stupid and make him incredibly stupid in this movie. Baby Groot. When I saw that trailer, that extended trailer of Rocket and Groot talking, and Rocket's like, then you press this button, this button, that just, just it just, it just drills into my brain. It's just like I, I hate it so much because it's, he's a. They make this character into an idiot, dude. He is a fucking. Isn't he just now? Isn't that how it works? Isn't he now an infant? So, that is one thing that I felt was a departure. Is Typically speaking, he may have been smaller, but they never really go, okay, when okay. Groot has to regrow, he's somebody different. Right. So I understand that, I guess, criticism that you may have, but like that's the the story that they've set up, is yeah. that they established very early on that because he's a baby, he's now got baby-level intellect. So if you're going to hate on that, what the but fuck he, is wrong with you? Like, why waste your time? But he doesn't. That's the problem. Oh, he's got he these not? like sick dance moves, and he's blowing up bombs, and he's doing all this stuff. He doesn't have baby like like intellect. He's just an idiot. That's the problem. Wh- wh- Can you wh- keep wh- calling people idiots? Wh- wh- where, when is he blowing he, he up bombs like intentionally in the in the yeah. initial dance scene? He's not he's not as smart as he was at the end of when he got blown up in the Guardians one. No, at the end of this movie when he's got the bomb and he's blowing it up, it's like he figures it out. He's able to navigate. A dangerous situation, scream, fight back enemies. He, he can place a bomb through a series of tunnels on a big on a big giant brain, but he doesn't know which button to press. It's like a total disconnect. I can't buy that he can do one but not the other. Dude, if this oh, was a DC you movie, you would be that the giant it, uh, planet needs to be a human to fight somebody, and except uh, instead just to fucking eat the guardians. Oh, we can talk about ego in a few. I if this was a DC movie, you would have been saying, "Oh yeah, he traversed all the tunnels in the uh, off the off the camera scenes, and he figured out his way." And he what? like what ba- what baby character would be in a in a DC movie? It doesn't matter about DC. It's just, I just don't like the character. So that's fine. So so they <laughs> they they definitely play up his youthfulness and naivete, but you only have yourselves to thank for that because of the reaction. And by the way, like. Fair enough that this is like ninety nine point nine percent like huge comic book fans that listen to this podcast, understandably. But like, are you just not going to at all consider that you are the one percent of audiences that are going to see this movie, and that there's like literally wait millions? There's some gi- giant scale of audience person that are buying tickets that are making this movie as successful because it appeals to everybody else and it's not necessarily the big bang crew so you can go fuck yourself i don't disagree like i said i understand and i'm on the wrong side of history with this movie i wanted something different but the audience doesn't agree with me but what did you expect like a fucking heist movie or a rom-com no i expected more like the first movie would have been cool with this crew i expected i expected i expected indiana jones and not austin powers by the way, Awesome Powers One I was awesome. No, if that makes any sense. No, I expected no, I an adventure you. movie with okay. some comedy, and not just not just a comedy with some adventure. So this, I guess, goes back to the whole you know expe- which is why I like the end of the movie thing. better. So with regards to expectations, there's no way that you were ever going to go, especially like you're watching all these previews where you don't, you already don't like Groot going in, and then he's in the intro for the first five minutes, and I'm, I'm fucking loving the intro, but I'm like, fuck, Higgins is sitting like four feet That's away from fault. me. That's your fault. No, 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 no. I, no, I liked it, but I knew when I got out. You're talking, you keep talking about and harping on about how there was this awkward silence when we left the movie. It's because everybody knows, like. If I was with any rational person that actually would have also liked the movie, wasn't a fucking old man, then they would have been like, yeah, that was actually an awesome movie. If I bro dated with Charlie, we would have gone out there and fucking shots of tequila and, uh, well, maybe not. Charlie and shots of tequilas. We walked out. And I didn't like it. Kevin Sharp, despite what you think, 
had a lot of problems with it. He didn't like it. Again, we talked about this when we were there. He wanted something, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but but the conversation we had, it sounded like he wanted something more like the first one. Charlie but that's was thing, not a hundred percent down, no. and you were the only one. So, like you, I'm, not, I'm saying we were all because when I walked out of movies, we're, we're like that was awesome. We're all super, we're all super. That's hyped. true, but that was never. My point, my point is that yeah, it was man, we never were a little jaded now too because we got so many superhero movies at this point. Early on, it was like fucking. You have Iron blowing shit up, and you walk out. That was awesome. I remember that when that we've point. seen it like uh, you <laughs> yeah. know five times. So you Iron blows shit from all. But when we finished, when we finished Suicide Squad, and, and and one of our buddies Gage came up and he walked up to us because he's a huge Squad fan. He kind of looked at me. He's like, "What do you think?" And I was looking around, and I go, "I know everyone hated this movie, and I really liked it." And I was like. Fuck everyone. I really liked it. And I got all the boos and people yelling at me. And I'm like, whatever. I liked it. I don't care. So if you like it, Bryce, Bryce out, man. Like it. No, I, I Bryce out. I went like I went home and told my friends that uh, weren't going to like throw shade on it, that I liked it. I told Kelly that I liked it. Um, and I expressed my appreciation for it then. But you and Kevin were, you know, kind of killing the killing the party mood. Um, so anyway. I think a couple things. First of all, this like the expectations is such a huge thing for this movie because everybody is going to go into this movie comparing it to Guardians 1, right. as they absolutely should. Yeah. And it is not as good as Guardians... Well, my opinion, it is not as good as Guardians 1, which makes it a very like tough thing to, uh, to review. Every review that you will read will compare it to Guardians 1, as it should. But fuck if it... like. If this was a standalone movie, not tied with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and not like, and it wasn't a sequel, it was a movie on its own, and it was just a sci-fi movie, it would have been a fucking great, great movie. It's just, you know, subject to expectations and its prequel that is going to make everybody, you know, have a different level of expe- or uh, uh, um, uh, review or, or interaction with it or interpretation of it. Um so anyway, I, I I fucking loved it. It was not as good as the first, but again, that's like a nigh impossible bar to climb. The first was so good because it was so original. They did try to do a lot of the same shit, and why shouldn't they? They weren't going to, even though Toby wants it, they weren't going to make it into a rom-com or a heist movie or change the formula that much because that's what the 99% of people that are making this movie successful want. And these people like yeah, you fucking hate Big Bang Theory. I hate it even more than you do. But like these, people, I don't think anyone hates it more than I do. <laughs> uh, I, I give you a run for your money there. Um, but I mean, those people, you know, hate them or not, they 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 pay the bills and and make them successful. Like I thought it was a, a great standalone movie. It just suffers by comparison. Um, I still give it um, my my. Have we done reviews or uh, ratings? My Can't grade. My grade would be that this was a, a B plus movie. Just shy of an A minus. There was just some things that we'll talk about later that uh, just kept it out of that. Uh, fucking absolutely loved it though. High B plus. Almost A minus. Toby. Yes. What do you think? I have no idea what you think. If we haven't talked at all about it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I went to this theater that's really old and stunk. Um, <laughs> no, uh, when I started watching this movie... You fell asleep immediately. Uh, no, that, that has happened quite a bit. I actually think the discomfort in the movie theater actually has helped me this time stay awake. <laughs> You're so uncomfortable you were forced to stay awake. 97% of the movie. So it actually really worked because I think if I watched in the state I was at the Mountain View Theater with those nice sofa couches, I would have slept like five minutes in, or maybe even less. <laughs> maybe the, group, the first song. Boom, done. Uh, you know, it's funny because you came so negatively. Uh, well, when you've talked to me without talking to me about it, I felt a very negative vibe coming from you. And that's fine uh, because I was still excited and I usually don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> so I temper your expectations a bit? Not, no, not at all, actually. I went in and watched it and, and, and about like 15, 20 minutes in, I'm like, what the fuck is Ryan talking about? Because I love this fucking movie. The characters are great. Uh, but then about maybe 30 or 40 minutes in, I, I I got bored. I don't know how to say it otherwise, but it kind of, I'm like, uh, it's kind of dragging a little bit. And then I rebounded at the end. I'm like, no, this is fucking awesome. So I, I'm really, 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 really torn on this because uh, I, I just didn't care for the ego stuff. 
Uh, is it ego? Yeah. It is ego, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's pronounced ego. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> Come on, guys. Uh, well, ego was really... Ego. No, is it really ego? No. It's ego. Oh. No, it's ego. Fucking Ryan, come on. <laughs> well, because... Be hilarious. The, well, if I read it in the books, it probably is ego for me. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Delicious frozen... No, pit. not like that... What frozen planet? No, There's ice caps. The, the in the, e in, is an a. Did he have polar ice caps? In, in the pull in the pullout scene. Uh, he didn't pun, pull pun out. not intended. Yeah, thank you. Um, anyway, he, he Toby, kept it in numerous it's, times. It's ego. It is ego. Yeah. Now, do you guys know the story behind Ego, the Living Planet? Like, I go for it, like, like because I'm a little curious. I, mean, I remember reading about this fuck, but I kind of don't remember well, so, anymore. So he's been in the comics and Silver Surfer. Yeah, 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 fucking shit happens. The, um, who created him? That? I don't while, care. While, while Higgins Why? is looking this up, a quick bit of fun trivia for those of you that didn't know is that this uh, is one of the first times that uh, Sony, and, no wait, not Sony. I'm sorry, Fox and. Uh, Disney slash the Marvel Cinematic Universe actually collaborated together. The first and possibly only time. They wanted to use uh, fucking the girl version of Higgins for Deadpool, Negasonic teenage goth girl. Um, but uh, she was not part of the Fox's X Men, but they wanted to use her. God knows why. And Ego, while being mostly a space-related, Guardians-related, under the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you would think, character, was actually had their first appearance in Fantastic Four, not Thor. So, technically, at the time the contracts were done, Fox owned Ego, and... Ego? Ego. Excuse me. And uh, and Disney-slash-Marvel owned... Negasonic Ryan Higgins. So what they did was oh, they you made... had a hard on for that one, Higgins. <laughs> Be honest. He totally did. So Be they, honest. they made it. This is a real story, by the way. They made a trade. They said, yeah. "Okay, you guys can have Ego because we're just never going to use that character, and you can have Negasonic Teenage Warhead because she came about in the Grant Morrison era, which was after the contracts had already been done." So, by the way, I'm thinking that like they also can't use like Phantom X. Um, or any of the people uh, post those contracts, the the new X characters that were posted, which was interesting for me to know. Anyway, it was just a, a kind of a, a cool little quick fact if you didn't know that. That so uh, who created they, Ego? Uh, it was created by uh, Stanley and Jack Kirby. Kirby. But, yep. but that's there was there was I, there was an old story that like they used Ego to like uh, like kind of do like a parody of like, I think it was John Byrne if I'm not mistaken in the comics like. Because it was ego, right? A big ego. I and get so, it. Keep going. No, that 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 was it. Like I didn't. That was not supposed to be a big thing. I, about your your Sony thing. I just thought it was a funny funny little thing about oh. ego, the living planet. Well, so but wait, oh, is that Lane? Lane? Hey, Lane made it. Come oh, on, Lane in. Gotta get someone to chair. Spoiler: He hated um, the movie. Did he? I don't know. He hates all the movies. Um, but no. So sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Um, yeah, it's really weird. I I. I sort of wish they kept this storyline for a third movie while I wanted to saw something a little simpler story-wise, in ways. Like, uh, yeah, I actually kind of got bored of the whole ego thing, and I didn't really care for it. Wait, uh, so, to sum up, you just didn't like the whole movie? You wish they saved it for a different no, movie? No, I, I like everything else. Like, I, I felt like this was a bigger build-up that maybe they should have done this as a third movie. Uh, you wanted the... F- the third act of the Guardians trilogy to be Ego? Yeah. Or Ego? Yeah. Can we just call him Ego? If you want. I do. Okay. Um, but, okay. I mean, I, I totally I absolutely Look, I know why they did it, because you had the whole thing with Yondu going at the end, which makes sense at that point, but up to leading to that point, I'm like, what the fuck they're doing? Uh, but in the beginning, I loved it, and I loved the end, and there's this chunk in the middle, I guess, that I'm like, what the fuck is happening? So I, I, I'm really, really Not- torn. I agree. I mean, I think when... Like, I love majority of the movie a lot. Like, I love these characters. I don't think they're as stupid as you think they are. I actually really did enjoy them. Uh, I think some of the jokes were just a tad bit over the line as I much would have liked. I yeah. wish they t- toned it down just a little bit. I think some of it was just too much. Well, I think that... I fucking love Hasselhoff. I was definitely bored in, in the middle. I think when the movie flips for me... Is when Ego says to to, to Star Lord, he's like, "No, like," and then I saw all these other people, and like when he, when that villain reveal happens, yeah, the movie completely picks up, yeah, 
And then they all come back. They're all together. Yeah. Then the movie starts. Like yeah, 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 yeah. the whole first hour and like twenty minutes are is like you can cut ninety well, percent of I, that actually, out. I liked it up till the, he showed up, and I mean I actually enjoyed the little one in space man thing. That was pretty funny. But once he showed up, I was a little bored. Yeah, they're just. Yeah. I, I felt like they. I think splitting the characters up was a huge mistake. Yeah, I'm not going to agree with you openly, but I agree. It was. <laughs> yeah. It was. I, I think that the movie would have been so much stronger if they <clears throat> if they kept them together. It's the whole their whole theme that they're going for the whole movie the, from the beginning and then coming together again at the end. Um, was that they were the family that they were searching for? Yeah, thank you, Toby. Yeah, but the thing exactly. is, but they already knew that that was the first movie. That's, so, that's the first movie. <laughs> right, no, no. So my point is that what I think made the first movie so, part of what made the first movie so great was that it was an adventure with all of them together, and then they go ahead and split them up very early in the second movie, and it was kind of like, okay, well, these individual adventures, like with Gamora fighting Nebula and fucking Drax with uh, Mantis and uh, like Rock, they, they Rocket just, doing his like, crazy ninja stuff. They in the just like that a lot. No, I liked them all individually, yeah. but I think that was a good <sighs> case of the, the sum being better than its parts. I liked all of those uh, separate uh, storylines, but I think that it would have been even better if they had found a way to make the story where they all stayed together the whole movie. They didn't have any problem doing it the first movie. Again, comparisons to the first movie makes it unfair. Charlie, why don't we start with you? We'll go back around in a circle again. Because um, I, I have a couple things that I would like to talk about, so we'll, we'll kind of expand this out. I, give me one or two things that you – like specific scenes you really liked and one or two scenes that you didn't like. Because I have a couple things that I want to talk about, that I, the scenes that I absolutely love and scenes that really bugged me. And I, I kind of want to expand this out to see, see what everyone else thinks. So one of the scenes that – sort of sticks out to me that I really, really liked. And when you get into the reveal, that's a large part of it, was just that immediately, and that's why it broke my heart to put the tumor in her head and he just immediately shoots eager. Like, I really liked that just... Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. No dialogue, no nothing, just straight to the gun. Yeah, I kind of woke up at that point. Yeah. <laughs> like so you that, were sleeping through most of the movie. No, that's the scene that, like, I, everything, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. The movie's starting, finally. I really like that scene. Um, I did like a lot of what they did with Yondo in this movie. Yeah, like, I did they, too. They did a very good job with his character. and Yondo use, and Ego. Using his character as sort of a foil for Rocket worked really well. Yeah. So, yeah. What, like, was there a scene or two you didn't like that you had problems with? Anything with Kurt Russell, and I usually love that guy. <laughs> so, Wait, what the fuck? You didn't like Kurt Russell? I love Kurt Russell. Fuck you. Go ahead, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> there were just a couple of times in the movie where it. I'm trying to remember. Like I was. Nebula's acting in this movie <coughs> wasn't very good, unfortunately. Like I, I did not think that they developed her character very well, per se. At least through. Like, I understand what they were going for in terms of what her story was, but I did not like a lot of the way they portrayed that story and how quickly it sort of changed. Um, and just, there were a number of times in my first viewing that didn't bother me in my second viewing, so I don't know whether or not it bothers me as much as it did. But there were, in the first viewing, there were a number of times where they would add that punchline. I'm just like, God damn it. <laughs> So, yeah. No, I agree. Um, <coughs> there are a couple things. Uh, some some of the things that, that I really didn't like in this movie. I, I hated the sovereign. I hated the the the, yeah, the gold I, I people. Wasn't, I wasn't. I, oh, this. the fucking space millenniums. Yeah, the yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, totally yeah. what they are. Yeah, the well, space millennials. So, I hated. Okay, yeah. So, so the thing is, is the sovereign are actually in. It's but in the Guardians of the Galaxy, but totally it's, different. It's totally different in yeah. in, in that. They're more of a religious thing and a cult, and the batteries that are in there are actually powered by yeah, faith. It's totally in the comic. In yeah. this, yeah, it's they, it, they were horrible. Yeah, well, I, I didn't get their entire plot where they're like, why do they need the guardians to do any of this? To have like a, a like a, a Borg attack fleet? Like why? Yeah. Like it didn't make a lot of sense. The, the entire motivation for them to, to be well, even they could soil with the, themselves with yeah, I was going to, but they like. 
they throw wave after wave of ships at them constantly. Because like, they're pissed off that they, they disrespected them and stole something. <sighs> okay. Um, but the, 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 the scenes that really bothered me, there's, there's, there's kind of two different types and there's four different scenes. One... Sorry, Toby. What? That, that David Sorry, Hasselhoff shit. Sorry, I'm arguing shit. with Bryce mentally, and I'm not sure what we're arguing about. D- David Hasselhoff was... That, I hated that. I hated what? that so much. Fuck you. And, and the what Pac- the f- and the Pac- the whole thing. thing. What the fuck? Wait, wait what did you just say? And the Pac-Man thing. I hated it. I didn't care for the Pac-Man thing. But him folding that shit up in his fucking pants? It's Come a on. joke. It's a, it's a dumb joke. No, it's not a dumb joke. You're a... It's a You're dumb, calling it's me a, a joke then. I fucking live like that for you, I don't you know how David many Hassel, years. You pretended David Hasselhoff was your, uh, was your not dad. Not quite that far, but I was pretty damn close to right. that. Like, it was a silly scene like, I, I when he's like... I was in reality a little more than fucking Peter like, Quill is oh, in space, but... It's sad. He made, his, he made people think that someone else was his dad. Oh, it was David Hasselhoff. Oh, it's terrible. What? No, what David that? Hasselhoff is awesome. You fucking Americans all hate him, but he's awesome. I have, Where no, I problem. Come from, I have no problem with David Hasselhoff. I he's thought that fucking was a, God. No, I not that really. But <laughs> really lame scene. Uh, again, that's that's what I'm talking about when I say like those Family Guy references. Like, oh, here we go. Uh, but I don't see that correlation at all. Maybe my least, my two least favorite scenes in the movie were. Uh, I felt they were very similar. Where they went just full on Looney Tunes in this movie. Where Rocket that was kind of funny. Where Rocket, the two scenes, one where Rocket is throwing the guys up in the air and they're slamming it back down, and throwing it back up in the air and slamming it back that, down. That was a the 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 white show that I didn't really enjoy. Really I bad. enjoyed it when he did it, but when they went like the whole fucking force yeah. and he seemed that, that was a little too. Like, remember when I said there was the line? That it kind of went over the line cartoony. a couple of times. Yeah. yeah, but, but I did enjoy the the time jump or no. whatever. It is. Yeah, I did. When I they did. were jumping, when, from when he's like a human can only do it what seven times, and they're going about to do it seven hundred times. No, the are wrong. I, I hated that. I thought that. that was kind of funny. That's like spaceballs. No, but like they went to plaid and like the, again, ah! it's awesome in spaceballs, <laughs> right? The, the best part of that space jump scene is at the end when Baby Groot just goes, blah. Like, of course, was, and it's a punchline at the end of a but, joke. It's but that's like, the thing is, it's Baby Groot. Like, it just, blah, it throws up, and that's what babies do. I not care for that part, but I actually enjoyed the whole right, fucking... You can I relate didn't. to just uh, instantaneous I, I think the boom, visuals vomit, are right? too day, cartoony, yeah. but I really enjoyed well, the idea they of did it once, but then they go... Back to yeah, it. because they're still at it. That's the joke. I, it's like it's like the whole tape scene you at like the end. Funny shit. I love funny shit. Like not, what? He does not. What? Like, like funny what? Shit. What? What he is your not. funny shit? I, I kind of just want to see the level of funniness in your in your like movie, enjoyment. TV. What yeah, you whatever. About? I just want to have a gouge. You already um, hate the Big Bang Theory. We all know that. You want to have a what? Huh? You want to have a what? Like a like a level, like to see where he's at. We already gouge. know he fucking hates the Big Bang Theory. Why do you always giggle and ruin my ruin my <laughs> um, attempts to get Toby to keep talking? Um, God damn it! Uh, Seinfeld is uh, one of the top five TV shows of all time. Always Sunny is one of my favorite shows of you like Always Sunny. Oh, Sunny's fucking. Genius. How do you not like this then? It is. It's crazy, genius. bonker, fucking shit. Always Sunny is dark. Yeah, but it's also fucking crazy bonkers. Yeah, but that's Always Sunny. I don't want always sunny comedy in like The Godfather. Like it's not what the movie is, and that's not what this should have been. This is not the fucking Godfather, though. No, but it. Sh- it this Definitely wasn't not. Guardians either. Like this was a weird comedy. It literally was Guardians. <laughs> Guardians too. Um, but it's like it's like the tape scene where it's like going tape. Like that shit just went on for. Mm. Ever there was, there was definitely a, a yeah, numerous, I didn't like that either. That, there, that was, went over the line. There too. was definitely <laughs> numerous scenes where it was like the tape scene was like, "Do you have any? Do you have just just fucking no? Just die already. It's done. Like don't yeah. drag this on." And the same with with, with um, Baby Groot trying to go get the the fin for Yondu. It's like. No, that was fucking great. No, no, Don't no. fucking go close Hold to that. Scene. That was fucking they did awesome. It way too many times. No, that was the and whole point of it. Pointless. It got funnier as it went on. No, it didn't. The fucking after table. Certain, the table was funny, but after the that, I'm like, fucking great. You get the toe, and you're like, okay, and then all of a sudden, they're no, still doing it. And you're like, see, they, okay, 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 okay. I will, I will give them fight this. you. I will give them this. I will lose, but I'll fight you. I will give them yeah. this. They had the comedy of they had they had the comedy of three, so that at least they stuck to that. But the scene just took too long. No, it did not. Yes, it did. I'll fight you too. It's the same you thing. It, 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 was was the, it was the same thing with you know. With, uh, I, laser, I'm starting laser to get face. a oh god. Oh, what was it? Laser face or taser, taser, taser face. face? That was funny. So at my first. theory is at first, none of us can like first. the same scene. We all have to argue about a scene that. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
The absolute best scene in the movie, hands down, no question asked. It's like three seconds long. It's when Sean Gunn, I think his name is, James Gunn brother, the... the Shoots Drax in the head? No, no. The Gilmore Girls guy. The guy from Gilmore Girls, yeah, the the guy that's the, the, the Ravager that stays with him. Yeah. When he actually flies and you see Mogo, that was the best scene in the entire movie. Well, hold on. Mogo? Did I say Mogo? You idiot. Ego. Sorry. Jesus. Sorry, Ryan Scott said that. Okay, well, maybe I was thinking Mogo. When you actually see yes, Ego? Yes, he did throw a DC The real Ego. In there. The real Ego. Yeah, yeah. I was like, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, but now if he's seen the real Ego, why the fuck does I he need a him human to talk, that fight though. little humans on his fucking own planet? Because eh. the thing is is, is, is if you look at look at it as a fly. How are you going to get a fly <sighs> off of your hair? You fucking squash it. But the thing is, is your hand might not get it because your hands contour I mean, a certain way. Mo- you're so okay, much larger. Let, let's let's the talk about. You're on a fucking s- planet. You just make a whole giant mountain to squash. <laughs> what a fly is not going to be a fucking alive anymore. Ta- well, he's a, they're inside of him at that point. Let's talk he about. He fucking just contracts himself <laughs> and poops it out. Whoa. What but the le- problem? But is let's that? talk I about really Mogo for a ego. second here. Mogo, stop saying no. fucking Mogo. I, I meant Mogo. Let's talk about Mogo okay, for a okay, second. Mogo, Who's Mogo? Mogo's the Green Lantern planet, planet. right? When Mogo, Mogo will like shit will get on him, and he's like, "I'm just a fucking planet." Is I don't that in have this movie. Mo- no, oh. but Mogo is a Green Lantern. He's a planet. He's a sentient planet that's yes. a Green Lantern. Yes. When stuff is happening on Mogo, he's yeah. like, "I don't, I don't have arms. I'm just a planet. I need the Green Lanterns to come help me get this shit off." Of uh, me. That's fine. That's right. fine. And that's like, so they already Mogo established has- that the fucking planet can do shit. <laughs> But the well, thing is, he created Mogo, himself in the fucking no, human. Mogo Why can, can he be a giant? Mogo can make the same stuff, he, organic stuff as he is, but he can't make like plants or animals. They are. He has plants or animals. They both them. go giant at the end. Yeah. Him and Star Lord, right? Yeah. Kinda. Does the Star Lord go like all like Pac Man? Yeah, he the starts Pac-Man to get all giant. Like, the yeah. Big, yeah. Yeah. But is he actually giant? Like Ultraman? They get big, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they surround themselves with like, yeah. rock. part of the planet, but basically. I want little miniature buildings for uh, you know <laughs> for for reference. So but, I know they're big, but it, but I'll ta- but I'll 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 go with your thing here because when Groot uh, puts the bomb, why doesn't he just tentacle? Because he had those tentacles that could do anything; it could go anywhere. Why didn't the tentacles just go in and take the bomb off of his brain? All right, like I, Man. It, it didn't. There's a lot of what like the fuck. You, what? You're gonna like pick apart plot holes in this, like no, but I mean, listen to yourself and then go back to and listen to any review of your DC movies. Like, what the fuck? You are you are you picking apart plot scenes from a fucking comic book movie? Uh, I mean, a little bit. Then, then where the fuck are you during your own reviews of DC movies, I dude? Pick, I pick apart stuff in Green and in, in Green Lantern, Green Lantern and DC not. movies keep, all the time. Keep going, but what the fuck? You did not do that in Green Lantern. That's because he had everybody else doing it for him. Yeah, <laughs> see, I don't I didn't need to. Seth but no, but it's, it's when I'm watching it, I'm like, when you're watching a movie and you think, why don't they just do this? Which they is sh- what everybody thinks about DC movies but you. So. Okay. Well, they show, I mean. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, in, in, I mean I'm mean, i not going to talk about Batman v Superman, but it, but they set up a scene where he has these tentacles that can kind of go anywhere and do anything, but he can't stop Baby Groot. It's like, all right, well, fine, whatever. If there's a reason, I don't know it. So... That to me. Well, the thing but, is, is, the thing is, is, the only thing that could get in there was Baby Groot because of the it, he's small and tiny and runs around. The thing is, 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 is the planet himself. Uh, what is around him? Yeah. He has formed and shaped, so he's no longer able to do anything. But, at the but core. those tentacles went those anywhere. Energy, those energy Dude, things. To, yeah. to devil's advocate, Ryan Higgins, this motherfucker. It, the planet just doesn't notice his Baby Groot. Why would the planet notice Baby Groot? The but he did. Okay, when. They had the whole scene where before Star Lord was able to command his powers, Baby Groot was getting suffocated. Drax yeah, was being yeah. pulled down into the planet. Yeah, they, they were they, right, and all of a sudden, because his body was being attacked, but this is the he thing: is he lost was control of the planet, which is kind of backwards because the planet should be more losing control of this body that yeah. it summoned rather than the other way around. But the thing is, is before that, Mantis was keeping him asleep. Yeah, why? So he wouldn't know what was going on. What? So it wouldn't what? be actively trying to stop yeah. him. So the thing is, is, is what Ryan said. No, no, yes, no, no. He was sleeping before that. Why well, would he yeah. need to sleep? Why would that body need to sleep if he's a fucking planet? 
No, she put the planet to sleep. Yeah, she went through like the ley lines or whatever. Those like energy when lines. When she touched that yeah. that vein, she put the planet itself to sleep. All right, but why does the planet need to go to sleep? Because, like Ryan said, he has these tentacle things. Why oh. can't it, it? It 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 yeah, ley lines really. It can't. Why can't he just attack Groot and all that? And he does, he does attack yeah. everybody after he wakes up. But the thing is, is when um, Peter. Star Lord breaks his concentration. He is no longer focusing all of his will on everybody else. He's focusing entirely on Peter, and that allows. Every, that's why he didn't take the bomb off of him. Well, well the more I think about it, the more my head hurts, and I don't enjoy this. But I, Brock, yeah, scene or two you liked, and scene or two you didn't like. Uh, so scene or two, I would, I liked. Shit, I think we've already talked most of them. Well, the baby group puking scene, I think, was was one of my favorites. Um. I really loved Yondu's fin head. I like. I love that they actually gave him the the full yeah, yeah, yeah. full fin, um, and just the the scene where he's going through uh, with Rocket and just killing you know, all the Ravengers. Like in the, I mean, it was overdone when it's like raining Ravengers, but you know, it made him a little too powerful. I thought. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is I well, liked- after the movie, it made sense because it's not like they're gonna do this again. Well, yeah. it's a Marvel movie, so none of them actually died. It's it's like GI Joe. They just <laughs> they just got like. Knocked over. Um, did su- did Superman save them all, Ryan? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I think one of the one of the parts that I liked the most, even though it was in a scene that I didn't really like, um, was the nod back to the original uh, Baby Groot dancing scene where Drax looks at Baby Groot oh, and he stops that. moving. Yeah, um, that was the only scene in that whole thing that I liked because I didn't like that. We're seeing all the stuff with Baby Groot, so you're trying to focus on that, but at the same time, trying to focus on this big, huge action scene that's going on in the background. That's um, the joke. It, it the thing is, is in, on the initial run through, I don't like that because it's drawing my attention two different ways. But on the second watch through, I can be like, oh, I want to see this part and stuff like that. So, um, as for stuff I completely and utterly disliked, um, I completely and utterly disliked every single fucking diorama that. Ego used to show the with his awesome like Jerry curl and everything. Fucking, what what is this? A fucking mannequin? <laughs> what the like, fuck? It wasn't was Jerry curled. What the fuck? His hair? His fucking. It was it, definitely not Jerry curled. Just, I mean, it was cool to see those 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 egg things shift open and stuff like that. But what was inside? I'm like, I'm literally looking at a window display in like New York at some clothing fucking store. It, like it was just these stupid mannequin things. Yeah. Um, which brought me back to what we were talking about, what Charlie was talking about earlier with the original Guardians and how we saw the Celestials in these little, you know, windows of like, of history holograms or whatever when the collector opens up, you know, the orb. And the thing is, is like, I'm like, Ego can't do something similar with like water or some fucking bullshit. So uh, to me, those things were just horrible. I mean, it was yeah, it was fucking hilarious when the last one opens up and it's like him copulating with a thousand different spe- species or whatever. But overall, I just didn't didn't really care for that. And I think the pixels reference was stupid. Pixels reference. The Pac Man. Oh. That wasn't a. F- <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's not a pixels reference, but yeah, the Pac Man thing. I mean, they they kind of set up Did the joke. Did you watch and- that movie? Pixels? No. They kind of set up the sick. joke and then. Answer it, but yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like that. Bryce, what do you like? What do you love? What, what do you like? Give, well, give me one or two. What's you your life? I love. Give me one or two you love. First of all, that non-pixels reference with the Pac-Man <laughs> thing, but uh, beyond that, so okay, a couple responses that uh, I don't always, but I directly disagree with Brock in a couple things. I thought that the dioramas were actually, while not awesome in terms of an action sci-fi movie, were great in terms of being just a metaphor for the greater movie, um, sort of showcasing how empty Ego's life was. All of those scenes were really mm-hmm. demonstrating that like his life is literally these hollow shells of events that happened. Um, all of them were literally mannequins that you know were going through the scenes that he had gone through in his life. Um, and... You know, were, were were unfulfilled, literally, um, and so I thought at the time that that was a great metaphor for for what had gone on in Ego's life. So that wasn't a favorite scene of mine. I just wanted to talk about that. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is how it's worth noting. I thought in a, in a cool way, um, I thought that the first fight scene was also 
a metaphor for the whole movie in terms of the need to fight together uh, to uh, to defeat the the big bad. Uh, Groot is always going to be fucking um, the comedic uh, whatever the fuck it is. Um, the uh, the the whatever you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, the comedic element uh, in there. Um, it showcased all of their sort of individual quirks and personalities in a, a microcosm of the greater movie and both movies together. Um, it did a, it did a sort of a great job and you know all, uh, including Drax jumping into the mouth and being you know sort of an idiot but uh, obstinate about you know this is how he's going to defeat the monster and and then. You know, he thinks that he's defeated the monster when they blow I it up. That was and... charming. Wait, you liked yeah, that, yeah. or you didn't like? <laughs> it? No, I did you like it. it. I okay. did like it. I liked how the opening sequence was a metaphor for the whole movie in terms of, you know, th- there's going to be comedy at play. Groot is this comedic backdrop. There, no, th- I mean, th- he was in the forefront. Um, so they need to. Uh, <laughs> so all of their uh, all of their individual attempts don't really do anything, and then they need to come together at the end. The looks on everyone's face after that, Brock, was just. It was. It was. That was what I was going for. Obviously, thank God. Um, so anyway, I thought that that was really cool and probably a very easily missed thing is just the whole like that the opening credits being a metaphor for the whole movie. Um, I fucking absolutely loved Kurt Russell. Um, Kurt Russell, both in the in the flashback with his not jerry curled hair, uh, but rather ah, not CGI. It was done with uh, makeup. I didn't not believe you before you said that, but thank you for pointing that out. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, I thought that he was great. I thought that David Hasselhoff was uh, was great. It took about half a second. If you have a problem with that, what the fuck? Get a life. <laughs> um, let's see here. Same, same with the baby group stuff, but I've already sort of talked about that. Is that you know, if you didn't like that, what the what the, what the fuck is wrong? Like, go you know, find go masturbate, go find some, <laughs> go go find something in your life that you like. Because if you literally don't like something that is literally I you were going designed to, say like to make people to make people like it, then then fucking like don't be such a grumpy old man and go. F- you know, go fuck yourself so that you are happy because it's it's like not liking you're, kittens. You're, it's like this thing is like genetically designed to be like. Well, I'm sorry, Brock wants to interject. Well, no, your baby Groot thing is kind of valid point. This generation needs that stuffed animal that they're gonna buy. That they're. What do you mean this generation? Gonna... Every fucking what, what? Mogway, fucking ET. What do you mean this generation? It's been going on forever. Yeah, literally every generation. This generation needs that stuffed animal, and that for them is baby Groot. They have every stuffed animal. <laughs> Well, yeah. You anyway. could get a stuffed Captain That's America. okay. Pokemon has spawned multiple generations <laughs> now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's no shortage of things that I liked. So, uh, also, I actually, and in spite of myself, because I thought that I was going to hate it, because I fucking hate him in The Walking Dead. Um, but uh, Who? Uh, fucking Daryl? No, you don't do it. Oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? Daryl isn't even in this movie. I was saying I really missed him in the movie if he so, was. Oh, my God. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> So Yondu is flying out into space, and they do the whole like father son like bromance thing in, in space. And I started rolling my eyes. I was like, "Oh fuck me, give me a break!" But I actually, the way that they executed it, I actually liked it. Uh, I wouldn't say that it was great, but it was much better than eye rolling worthy. Um, I thought that they did a very good job uh, with that. I also was shocked at how much I didn't roll my eyes at the whole uh, Yondu rocket. Um, that was fucking I'm, great. I'm just like you seen that they had. I was I really fully loved expecting that scene. when he started talking about like you could see it coming, like, you know, I am you. I was getting ready to roll my eyes, but ended up being like, Okay, well, I don't I uh, and I forget his name, the Yandu actor who was like fucking actor Michael number Rocker. seven in Rooker. Rooker. That's right, it's Rooker, yeah. Oh, Thank Rooker. you, Lane. Introducing Isn't Lane, this everybody. also a uh um, a throwback to Cliffhanger? Speaking Wasn't of Michael Rocker and abs- Stallone in that movie together? You know what? I don't know, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Can we talk about... No, no, I, I'll get to that later. Um, okay, sorry. Um, I, I do want to talk about the post credit scenes, too. We'll, okay, we'll, we'll get we'll, to that, but I also want to talk about yeah, something else. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so the, there's even more shit, and I'm just you know speaking off the cuff, so those are the things that immediately come to mind. There's a lot of other things that I really did like. Some things that I didn't like, just to you know keep it a little bit equitable... 
I hated that Ravager scene when they're raining from the skies. I, I was like, so basically Yondu is God because he's <laughs> literally killing everybody. So I thought that that was annoying. Um, what else didn't I like? I also didn't like the Looney Tunes scene with Rocket in the Forest where they, where they I wouldn't call it Looney Tunes, where they start like uh, like jumping up from the forest floor and then falling down. Meanwhile, he, he like apparently kills or incapacitates, you know, uh, easily over a hundred of them, but <laughs> is still caught in the end. It, it, I didn't use the term Looney Tunes in my own mind when I saw it, but that sort of does describe it pretty well, as loath as I am to agree with that uh, description. Um, but I did, I, I mean, I didn't like or dislike the whole going through the dimensions. I think that you're being way too aggressive. Oh, I actually wrote some fucking notes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so. shit. Toby. No, 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 really quick. Nebula. You guys are fucking throwing Cliff shit in Nebula. Oh my god. Um, Stallone a rocker. And a dude in the fucking Rooker. spaceman. Rooker. Did you listen to Lane? Lane doesn't have a lot to say, but what he says is as wise as Charlie. Yeah. And by says, I mean says. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Nebula. Fuck you. I thought Nebula was great. Nebula's story arc was infinitely better than the last one where she was just some, like, puppet. This movie, she actually gets to express... And, and take out some of the frustration uh, that we were that was hinted at in the last uh, one that uh, we didn't get in this one. Second, Kurt Russell already talked about him. He's awesome. Uh, next point, punchline in every scene. I thought that there was too many punchlines. I think that they could have done with fewer punchlines. There was literally a punchline in every scene, uh, and I didn't think there needed to be. Okay, next point. Sovereigns are millennials. Fuck you. Stop being such an old man. The Sovereigns, like, they're millennials because they all have group think. I mean, fucking, I guess, but... But the fact that they won't go fight themselves. Such yeah, a... they just sit around playing video games, and they're yeah. all just complaining, and they all have, like, hair in front of their eyes, and they're Literally, all whiny. Literally, the and... one that plays the most video games of anyone at this table <laughs> is the old man complaining about this. Like, you literally play more video games than anyone. <laughs> That's actually true. Oh. Okay, well, I don't know that. Anyway. He's been playing a video game yeah, the entire time. Yeah, Charlie podcast. plays games. Yeah, but all that's all a phone video game. Ryan Ryan plays real video Except games on TV and computers at home. And also, Charlie can, like, not throw shade and play video games. Yeah, you, you can just talk sit, like, and in think your at the same time. <laughs> and you fucking play video games in your off time. And, and you can't throw, talk to anybody. And then throw shrug faces at fucking great sci fi movies because you're a fucking old, grumpy man. Uh, that doesn't like like cute genetically designed <laughs> animated characters uh, because they're done by Marvel. If this was a fucking Disney movie without the Marvel tie, you would have been like, "Oh my god, I'm getting the plushie, I'm getting the amiibo, I'm getting the fucking like hardcover." I don't even know somehow. He, somehow he'd have a hardcover. I don't know. Man would be like, "Why the fuck do we have Guardians of the oh, Galaxy and bed sheets?" Be, and he would yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, uh, Groot printed condoms. He'd be like, what the fuck? Like, and he'd be like, baby. Oh, you got Charlie. Good job. You got Charlie. He'd be like, baby, because it's Groot. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be holding himself and being like, I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> anyway. Well, what is even like an equivalent of baby Groot? It's the baby Groot part. If this was always it's, Groot, it's, I'm it's, sure I it's wouldn't wicked. mind. It, no, but that's, it's, that's it's the other thing that annoys me so much. Is I that like. imagine a triple day. Fucking good idea. Okay. Like okay. if, like if baby, what? like if it's like, if it's like, baby. He's turning red and stop breathing. <laughs> Somebody give him oxygen. What drives me the most crazy? Also, I I lost my fucking train of thought. I, if it's like baby, oh, oh, oh it's the, the, the you will, and I mentioned this already. You will never have to worry about Baby Groot again. You will never have to see him. Leanne will never have to see Baby Groot again. Like, oh no, baby, you just fucking kill him again. I want Baby, baby Groot. Baby Groot will be at Disneyland for the rest of my life. Yeah. Okay. I'll, That's why you hate him so much. This be is honest. the fucking complaint from the one person at the, in the entire room that, that goes keeps to going Disneyland to Disneyland all the fucking time, and you're complaining about going to. Disneyland because you have to see this adorable Groot. character. Like your priorities are so fucked. <laughs> it's so fucking crazy. You were complaining about seeing this adorable little Pat character. Donald Duck is still gonna walk around Disneyland no matter how many baby Groots are around. Okay, my uh, next point was David Hasselhoff, and we already talked about how awesome that was. So, Night Rider for life. Um, so I didn't like how uh, I already talked about this too, but I do want to reiterate uh, how they pulled them all apart. Um, I just I know that I already said it, what but I point. just wanted to reemphasize. They, they pulled all the characters oh, into yeah, yeah. separate little storylines. When I think that, like, if they'd kept them together, the they, one they story had, would have They been had better. to do that because you, you need to take the thing away so they, they know that it's it's something that they, lo- they they could lose it. Totally disagree. 
Uh, I mean, it's, like it's, I said, that was the plot of the first movie. They didn't need to separate them at all in this movie. Right. No, the plot of the first movie was getting them together and them staying together. Oh, that was my last right. point. Was that, that, but an, this movie is, is they pulled them apart because they need to realize that they are a family. What? But that's what the that's what the first movie is. That's the plot of the first movie is that these guys come together and they're yeah, a fa- they're a dif- dysfunctional this, family. The other thing that this movie picks up major points where the first one dropped a lot of points for me is the fucking ending scene with the villain. The fucking dance scene in number one, I get it. It's charming. It's really fun. It's funny. It makes sense. And they actually explain it, I think, very eloquently in this movie about why he was able to, you know, hold on to the to the Infinity Stone. But the fucking dance scene, like, if there was one flaw in the first movie, it was, in my opinion, that. And there wasn't that. They had a great ending to this movie. So... This picks up points where, where that one dropped off, and for those of you that watch the Premier League, you know you got to pick up points where you can uh, while the other teams drop points. Um, Higgins Arsenal, I'm afraid, is going to you know pull in a, a, a late season fourth place, even though he hasn't watched an Arsenal game all season. Uh, while uh, my Liverpool team is uh, clinging on to third with dear life. Oh wait, no, I think that they're now actually in fourth. But um, so you're on soccer. Get back to Guardians Volume Two. Um, great movie. A plus minus one grade. I thought you were giving it a B plus, but it was an A minus. That's how a grade math works: is A plus minus one grade is a B plus. That's how it works. But you were giving it like a really close one. Was... That literally, I have nothing else to say to you. That is the same thing. Why don't you a plus why don't you minus the grade B is B plus. Why don't you call which it is B what plus? I said the whole time. Toby. How are you guys all on your phones and not jumping in here? Toby. Yes. Give us a scene or two you love and a scene or two you didn't care for. Ah, uh, I obviously already said I love the fucking jail uh, uh, Groot scene when he grabs all the stuff, and I think I might have been the only one laughing the loudest in the theater. It was a little embarrassing, maybe. Uh, uh, actually, I think I laughed a lot of spots where nobody else laughed, so maybe there's something different with me or <laughs> weird. Uh, when all the bodies are raining down. No comment. Uh, <laughs> uh but, uh, you know, I, I, I really, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just didn't like the whole... So, so, so when I was watching the movie, I, I was, like, into it because I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. And then Kurt Russell showed up, and I'm like, I kind of see what's happening here. And that's when I got bored because stuff, you know, you see coming. And the minute that stuff went away, I'm like, okay, I'm really into it again. And... I actually also dislike those statue thingies. I almost wished he s- told that stories in flashbacks. I like any. I didn't need to see that that scene in the beginning. I actually kind of wish that was. We see Kurt also show up, and you go like, "Who is he?" As opposed to him showing up in the beginning in a movie, and then you reveal all the flashbacks, and then you reveal all the fucked up shit he Dude, did. It was for the metaphor. Literally, it was for the metaphor. Yeah. If he did a flashback, they would be like full fledged. Yeah. Like, experiences. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just saying what I didn't like. You're the fucking movie person. Yeah, you don't I appreciate don't a good like metaphor. It. I just don't. I didn't. I didn't like those white statues, man. <laughs> They look creepy if and If it were shit. Asian statues, would you be like, that was the best scene? No, I no, love that no. Scene. If they were yellow statues, it wouldn't make any difference, man. I, 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 I would have liked it Maybe even the was... brown statues. I'm like, okay, that looks good. I would have liked it if it was something like they were. He, we were seeing his memories on like the surface of water or something or liquid that he had. I think that would have been a lot more... Like like Toby says, more realistic. The, the both of you. What the fuck creepy. nitpicking is this? This is like, you would have liked it if it was a flashback or a water scene, no, but they I chose just, it to do dioramas, I, and so no, I just these got, are scenes you didn't the, the, like. The it's way, like, this the, is the fucking most nitpicking thing I've ever heard, well, the fucking, other than you, anything you, that Higgins you, says. You, you fucking heard all my other reviews. I always nitpick, uh, because I, I fucking love my movies. Well, this th- what I'm asking right now is to nitpick. What are these little things that you like and don't like? It, no, you're asking what you... <laughs> liked and didn't like not like what minor change would have I mean, made I, this mediocre scene slightly less mediocre i generally really enjoy event. i generally really really like kurt russell actually uh but with this movie i enjoyed everything else a lot that's why i'm really torn with this movie because i enjoyed the other stuff a lot i love the stallone stuff i love uh oh! Uh, I love the Yondu stuff I, I i love the whole you know him going oh you were my dad thing at the end i i there's so many things I really, truly love in this movie, and then I was just really bored through parts of it, so. Can we, that was another point, I'm sorry, that I forgot to make, what the fuck, Sylvester Stallone, 
what the fuck was that? Well, so let's actually talk about this. Um, cause he's the actual Guardians, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So uh, right, but like, are they planning on making one of those movies? Well, no, I think it's a cool little like you nod. know side nod. Yeah. But, but they 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 could have used anybody. Like so, why not? He's like the space <laughs> expandables. Well, I, I like the space fact. Expendable. That they it introduce is. these he characters. Got the and he got the Manilias, and the fucking space expanders. I like the fact that they introduce these characters, but they're very different from the comic versions. So they they do introduce um, uh, Sylvester Stallone as uh, Starhawk, who's one of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, oh, he's supposed to be Starhawk. Yeah, that's Starhawk. Yeah. What um, the fuck? So he looks nothing like his hero. <laughs> uh, I mean, he 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 kind of does a little bit. Oh, he looks like his hero clicks, like, right? Not the hero clicks, okay, but he that's... looks kind of like the original character. The 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 suit he wore he wore in like the in some of the comics. So at the very end there, when they what they show all the different Ravager groups and they all get together in the in the post credit scene. So that is um, Starhawk. Mm-hmm. That is Ving Rhames as Charlie Twenty Seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is uh, uh, Michelle Yeoh is uh, Atla. Uh, uh, um, I'm so uh, glad uh, he sorry. said his name because Atella? fucking Bryce here is going to make me say his name all over and over and over again. <laughs> Ving Rhames. Ving yeah, Rames. fuck you. Wait, wait, wait. Which character am I going to say? Um, actor. Which actor am I going to make you say? And I didn't realize this. Uh, Michael Rosenbaum was, uh, was Martin X, who was in other parts of the movie too. He's the that crystal. was Michael Rosenbaum, yeah. He's the crystal guy. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. I didn't oh. realize that either until I didn't get that, that either. Wow. Well, because I think it's just the voice. I don't think he. Oh, because it's all he's all crystal, right? Wow. And then um, I didn't know. I did not realize this after the movie. Uh, Mainframe, who's one of the other characters, but she's a she's a later uh, uh, guardian. Um, uh, that, I didn't that, even realize this was that was Miley Yellow. Cyrus. Oh fuck that! What fuck that shit? Yeah, boycotting yeah, yeah. all Disney movies. Yeah. Fuck you, Marvel. <laughs> Dying of fire. So I don't know what that's all about. Um, she was sober th- enough to do that. There was uh, there was a talk from Kevin Feige who says uh, uh, this is this is from Collider. I'm not sure where it actually. Um, uh, um, I don't know where this comes from. I think this was from a press conference. He says they were asking if this was f- for fun or a future movie. He said it's always a bit of both. Uh, we do it right. because it's fun in the moment, and it's fun as a potential sneak as to what's to come. I think all things being equal, I think James and everyone at Marvel would love to see the continued adventures in some aspect, whether it's a large uh, part in the future movie. Or as James said, just to say uh, a Howard the Duck level appearance for all those original characters down I the line. I think either way, it's really cool. Yeah, no, I thought it was cool. But, like, but either way, even if they continue with more of it or if it's yeah. just going to stay as like kind of cameo. But they make them thing, villains, like, which I was like, I don't really. Are I they mean, villains? What? what the fuck? They're, They're not, not villains. villains. They're well, ravagers. The ravagers no, no, said, no. let's they, go steal some shit. Yeah. yeah. No, they are not villains. They are definitely <laughs> I, didn't, I did not see them dick. as villains, what's even the, if they're what, stealing what? shit. What do you mean? What, so Wait, the gardens are stealing shit? No, they have, their own, they have their own code of honor. They defend the universe in their own way. They have a code. The, Sylvester Stallone. The ravagers are like they, pirates. So, they, have, they, they have Yeah, pirates are fucking awesome. Funerals. Pirates and they have the fucking galaxy. awesome funerals. So I'm not saying they're not cool. I'm just saying they're not the good guys. Well, you also thought that the X Men until recently were villains. So fuck you, European. In IVX, so they were totally were. No, fuck you. So anyway, uh, but the uh, but the, I would say the bigger scene, the the real big scene, and something that is gonna I I, I assume pay off. So the final post credit scene, you get uh, to see kind of the master plan of uh, uh, what the, the heck's her space name? Millions. What's her what's the her high name? Priestess? Yeah, what's her name? I'm blanking on what her name is now. Um, Aisha, the lane says. Aisha, yeah, yeah. Uh, lane, three for three. No, he only said it like four times. Sorry, I, I can't, I can't oh, hear him. Oh, you can't hear him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, again, this, this deviates extremely heavy from the comics, but the, her that race of people, the Sovereign, uh, again, this is not from the comics in any way, shape, or form, but they are setting him up that... They are making a new kind of. They're about to birth the ultimate hipster. Yeah, they're they're going to make a new weapon or something, and it's Adam Warlock. Uh, yeah. A new evolution. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. So they straight up have the full blown Adam Warlock cocoon there at the end. Now I thought she was going to say, and I and we'll call him him because that's what his name is when he first appears. So she is her. There's a character in the Marvel comics named her who was like a because Adam Warlock originally yeah, was yeah, named yeah, no, no, yeah, him. Yeah. Right, that right. was his name. Uh, but but I disagree with you very slightly there. I didn't think that she was going to be her. I thought they were going to make a second well, one that would have been her. She is her. That that is the character from the comics 
who again she doesn't appear. I'm familiar often. with the character from the comics. Her. Yeah, that's her. But I thought that him was created before her. Right. Him or Adam Warlock is right. more commonly known as right. was created like old school FF comics back in like the right. the, the mid sixties, I think mid mid late sixties. Right. Her. She comes way later, and she's only in a handful of comics. Totally different character. Right, and not the good comics. Uh, she appears like in Hulk. She was in the Mark Wade FF run. She's like, she's, she's been in, but again, very few appearances, and not anything like... Wait, are you saying that she's her because she's gold-skinned? No, that is, that is her name. It is the same character. Oh. Yeah. When they like Adam Warlock, they give her a name, and it's the Aisha, whatever her name is. Um, that that is that is who she is supposed to be. Uh, but they 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 make both of them, Adam Warlock, uh, him and her, Adam Warlock and Aisha, part of part of uh, the the Sovereign. Which again, n- totally different from the comics. Adam Warlock has no relation. He's going to be a that. fucking Manelium. Uh, uh, no, fucking what? Fuck you! I'm not repeating. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I just want to know what the he's going to be. I just want to learn what I, he's going to I be. hope not. I hope he's, I mean, Adam Warlock. I don't I don't know. He's going to be a fucking millennium. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I I read something that they weren't really going to use him till Guardian 3, which upset me a little bit because I want them to use him with the gauntlet. Yeah. No, yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. but they can't. There's not enough time to build up like his I importance. I don't fucking care. I want Adam wow. Warlock Oof. in the gauntlet story. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, there's no way that they would build him up. It would be another chink in the armor. No, Adam Warlock would be incredible. By the way, and for those be... of you that want Ryan Higgins' early review of avengers three part one it's going to be a shrug face just i hope in, not just saying right now <clears throat> again okay you know if i can't have surfer i want at least adam war yeah right yeah now. totally now bryce they just they just won't look but I while i may sit. be and by the way you would be pissed because they wouldn't have enough time to develop him properly and then they would do injustice to the character which they haven't the done the character is yet. always somewhat kind of mysterious who's just there when he mm-hmm. needs to be God, how good was Vision? They did a good job with Vision. They, they did, did a great, fucking great, great job, job with, with Ego, by the way. The fucking pullout to your point, Higgins, earlier. Yeah. When when that fucking loser from Gilmore Girls is flying the ship <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and they show the planet and it, like the craters in the planet like make a face. Make a face, yeah. It was oh, so good. It's like one of the best scenes in the movie. Now, you say that I'm like, oh, I'm worried about about Thor. Yeah, I'm worried about four Avengers. out of four movies in a row. Okay. I'm going to say that you're going to be I worried about the next movie. Terrified of Wonder Woman and Justice League. Terrified. You know, I really was not. Why? Jake, no, 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 no. I really was not until that new trailer came with the fucking pop song. Oh, then, yeah. then I got terrified. Yeah. I, I haven't watched it. Oh. It was actually playing right there. <laughs> oh. I, I, I haven't watched it. That, uh, that pop Snyder song. Zack not directing it. You should not be worried. But also Justice League. Terrified. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm terrified about Justice League, yeah. But Wonder Woman, I'm not. Wonder Woman, I'm okay, very so hopeful for. So Justice League, I mean, fucking Zack Snyder, go fuck yourself. We've taken care of, of one, two after credit scenes now, right? The rest, are po- the rest are nothing. The rest are all nothing. What, you didn't like Teenage Groot? I, I actually didn't like how uh, they went back to the Stan Lee stuff with the Watchers. I thought that it was yeah, yeah that was over time. Was the worst. I thought that it was perfect the way Holy it was. Shit. Yeah. It was this perfect little like snippet and just like leave it alone and don't address it. But then they went back to it and it was like, ah oh, man, like again. Overplaying that joke. Now, oh God. it doesn't feel like they said he was a watcher, but I really... Wait, what? In the credit, he was listed as watcher informant. Is that what he was called? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Maybe he's just telling, he's just telling yeah, the watcher what stories. The, don't fucking talk about how he's like Marvel saying he's a watcher. Well, Get the, what, no, I mean, what that's... What are you even trying to insinuate? What are you trying to insinuate? So the fan theory running around oh, in these movies... You. No, no, you no. hate the internet more than I do. But this is, this is a really good one. It's a really good fan theory. Tell me about it. The whole like because Stan Lee is in every one of these movies, right? Playing yeah. a different character. Yeah. The and, and they're all during these big major events. Well, Owatu always shows up during these major events and is in, and, and watches them, right? I mean, it sometimes gets involved. But the the theory having Stan Lee be the watcher for the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the greatest thing they could do. Yeah. I, that is so awesome. Because the and thing is, is the it, fact that they actually he references one of his other cameos right. in that scene right. confirms 
he's supposed to be the same person in all these movies. Yeah, he said, and then there was a one time I was a FedEx driver. Now, that, you take anything that I dislike about the comedy in these movies. That to me is like that is that works so well, and it's so funny, and it's respectful to the source material. It's respectful to a real human being and their and their value to these movies. It kind of sets him up as one of the most important characters in these movies, but he's never supposed to be involved, right? I love the idea of having Stanley be be a watcher, especially if they make him Oatu. Like that's, mm. but mm. it doesn't feel like they were saying he was a watcher. He was with the Watchers, but he's got like a spacesuit on and stuff. But I think that's I would have loved for them to have just gone full with it and and, yeah. and made him a watcher. But we didn't need that extra scene. But it just sort of just it continues the joke a little bit too far. Yeah. Yeah, because when he when they're going through when they come across him, I was like, I again, it was during that scene where he's, they're traveling from planet to planet, and I was like, whoa! Someone said they saw Hulk in one of those scenes. Yeah, there was like a planet. Yeah, Lane Lane saw. Was was that? Did they actually show like Planet Hulk in one of those scenes? I I, sure. I didn't catch that really fast. Yeah, I did not catch that. So that would have been just. I, yeah, I did not see it. Uh, that would be awesome if it did. That's probably ripe for Easter eggs because not. I'm sure clear enough at least yeah well exactly I need but the like, blu-ray exactly need on the blu-ray when you can like go see like frame by frame there's probably a fucking lot of awesome easter eggs yeah i was hoping to see like some scrolls in there or like you know they can't uh, do scrolls though, yeah right? you know whatever you know you know what i mean some the, cool the Chitauri. alien Chitauri can go fucking yeah, die in a fire i hate Chitauri. some cool f- you know they could have gone through like and you could have seen Just, mephisto or yeah. something yeah something oh, that something. would have been incredible yeah yeah okay so i i Half take back the Stanley thing. The, your your internet theory that I was throwing shade at <laughs> would actually be that actually makes the, a lot more sense than I would like to admit. So we got some uh, stuff in the. We did a, one of our guys on the Facebook group did a poll. So we got to poll a bunch of our Facebook group uh, people. If you want, Facebook dot com slash groups slash geekbox, and you can go vote on great polls. That's groups, polls. not groups. Groups, which would be a better poll. I am groups. Um, You're a groups. So we had fourteen people give it an eight. I'm uh, going from the the most to, to least. We had uh, ten people give it a nine out of ten. Four people gave it a six. Uh, three people gave it a ten out of ten. I rocked the only seven, and we had one person gave it a five out of ten. So who's I, the five? Um, just one of our listeners. Um, I'd like to give it a, uh, an informal ten just to raise the average. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, mostly very positive. I mean, it, it, you know. Uh, uh, six, eight, nine, and ten were all the, the highest um, uh, 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 marks, and people love this movie. So, mm. I, I, I don't think this is um, going to be seen as a, a, a poor movie or anything. No, 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 no. I mean, again, it's just not what I want. Uh, like got, the past half dozen Marvel movies, we got a ton of questions here on Twitter. I'm gonna, about about Guardians. Let me go through and read some of these guys here. Um, let's see. Uh, Wait, 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 before you just for two seconds before we get into that. Yeah, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Do we didn't really sort of finish that? Why the fuck? Like, he can't have been cast for this movie to be in the after credit. He was literally in that last scene longer than he was in that like earlier. Scene. Like he hadn't. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean the, the earlier scene he had like a not was, an extended dialogue. It was less than a minute. He was in the. It was less than a minute. He had a f- couple full lines of dialogue. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm just. I'm perplexed. I thought that he made an arrangement with James Gunn. I mean, what? it's Michael R- calling him up and go, "Hey, some man, we'll get that." Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just he's probably a, were you he a Gilmore's Girls reference. No, close. He probably just didn't want to throw away his shot. I, it's probably, hey, do you want to be in this movie and make you know a little bit of money for the rest of your life? Just at you know, be in it for one day, shoot once, but like. What the like? What, I just and maybe we'll have you on more later. But they probably won't with the character that he is. It just. Can, can, I would love to really, know why because I, like I didn't like him or hate him. I like I was excited that he was in it. He wasn't really in it. Was Nathan Fillion in this one? They cut. Oh, well, did they? cameo got cut. They cut Nathan Fillion and they cut. Um, no, no. I thought that he was, was he supposed from, to be there as the um, Jack guy? Goldblum's. What was that? Was he supposed to be the Serenity guy? No, I or, thought he was no. supposed to be Wonder Man. Yeah. Wonder Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah. yeah. But Let's I, Ghost Avengers for life! I thought that that was in the Avengers 3 movie. Was it this one movie? It was cut from this 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Brock brought up too. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum had a was supposed to have a short when they're flying between the planets, right? I think so. But the thing is, is like he his picture shows up in the end credits. Yeah, yeah. So I had this moment when his picture shows up at the end. I was like, "What happened? Did I sleep through Jeff Goldblum's like <laughs> appearance in this movie? Did I have a stroke and I just completely forgot?" Yes. But yeah, he shows up in the end credits, but okay, then not don't in the talk movie. about who he is. Is he in Avengers? Don't tell me who. He's Jeff Goldblum? He's yeah. in Thor. He's in Thor. Yeah. Okay, please don't tell me who he is. Okay. He's a guy yeah. in some makeup. Yeah. Who, who, He's who the make, new collector, who, <laughs> and I'm going to be supremely disappointed. He's like, oh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, let's go through, read a few of these, few of these, few of these. Um, uh, this is from Jeffrey Grubb. Uh, he says, uh, uh, he was happy that Rocket uh, – they dealt with Rocket being a bully and not letting me get off the hook for that. Oh, that's interesting. He says the movie is going to stick up from other superhero movies because of its dedication to characters and their arcs, which – I mean I felt Guardians 1 did it much better, but mm. I think they did a did a decent job in this. No, I think that it was six of one half dozen of another. I think that some of them had much better arc fulfillments. Like Gamora's arc last – movie was way better than Gamora's arc this movie. Mm. Nebula's last movie was nothing compared to this movie. I thought, yeah. I thought the Star Nebula Lord. story was kind of touching. This movie? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's yeah. Yes. I, uh, yeah, I like, well, I didn't like Drax. I liked in the other in the first one. In this one, I wasn't too keen on his... Because yeah. he felt like the butt of a joke almost yeah. at every, every, every mm. scene he was in. And then his interaction with Mantis, it didn't really feel... Like it, I it, thought Mantis no. had a lot of potential, are, but you guys are both wrong. The, <laughs> the, the 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 Drax of this movie, they never addressed. You don't know anything about Drax in the first movie, other than that he takes everything so seriously. But and he had like several lines of dialogue this movie that like express like where he comes from and like his culture and and why he like you know how he met his wife and what happened to his family. Like all you know is but that then it like, turns his family into, died. Then and, it turns into like that butt of the Joker levity thing that that saturated the movie. Uh, whether or not that's true, you still got way more understanding of his character than you did in the first movie. So with so. the first movie, he was a man with a vendetta. Mm-hmm. Charlie will agree with me. That, that makes you wrong. At the end of the movie, they established the vendetta was supposed to carry on to Thanos after that. They never mention any vendetta in this one. or They barely mentioned Thanos in this movie. Yeah. They gave him like one quick mention. That's it. Yeah, they've, yeah. But, you know, didn't make it any better or worse that they did that. I mean, it's Craig. Would, that, would that have just driven <sighs> Craig. me great? Oh, Craig. It's Craig. Craig asks, cast of the podcast members as, as the cast of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So who's who? Charlie's fucking Groot. not baby Groot. The, the <coughs> other Groot. The, the tall one. Adult Groot. But how cute would it be if Charlie was baby Groot? <laughs> that, would be, that would be very cute. <laughs> Let's be real. It would be just like one leg of his. It would be baby Groot. Bryce's laser face. Taser face, <laughs> taser face, sure, sure, oh, sure. Oh, oh, so with scenes that I didn't like, uh, I have to admit, I hated the taser face thing. Talk about okay, I will disagree hey, with you. Bryce's rocket lot. on your quill because you guys fight all the time. What the fuck? Yeah, no, no I am the handsome he, one. He's quill, he's he's quill and yeah. he's no, but quill you, and Yondu, you, you, but I'm also much funnier it. than Higgins. So I'm, I'm, I'm the best parts of both. Uh, <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm just gonna get dumped with Drax? Uh, so I just I, the taser face thing. I was like, I thought it was funny for the first thirty seconds, yeah. and then they made it like a seven minute thing, and I was like, I, I just love so much of this movie, but fuck. Yeah. Oh, also, I thought that um, the Scottish guy from Braveheart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Sons of Anarchy mm-hmm. was going to be in way more of the movie. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they kill him, like, oh, immediately. Way too, soon. Way too soon. I love that guy. The, the Scar Man. The Scar Man. It, the, the Scar the Man. That, the the they, only they Scottish Ravager. On. Yeah, the fucking Scar. With scars. dreadlocks. The scar only man. one they throw out and you see The one die. dude with a scar on his face. I would have Charlie <laughs> look it up, except that he's playing fucking Puzzle Quest. Okay, so uh, there's, one Ravager, there's one Ravager they shoot out the airlock, right? And you see him die. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. That's the guy from Braveheart and also oh, from okay. Sons of Anarchy. I had, and I Face I Off. He's, yeah. a, he's, he's, a, he's a great, like, uh, whatever, background character. I don't think he's had any leads as far as I know. Mm, okay. uh, yeah. Uh, Gladiator, was he? Mm. Fucking talking about great movies. Um, he, what? what? He was Max versus no, because that was um, the fucking uh, brother. Sorry, I don't know his name. Um, Toby's totally rocket. What? Toby's totally rocket. 
I can see what Toby. What is Bryston? Yeah. I'm not Rocket. You're Rocket. <laughs> no, you know what? I, I, I think he's Gamora and you're Star-Lord. Ooh. Ooh. We have to kiss now. Yeah. You guys already did. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> we already did? Yeah. Whoa. Sounds good to me. Right. Travis says. There's a picture. What? Travis oh, says. Oh, of me trying to kiss him. Yeah. Oh, Travis it's that said, unspoken thing that Higgins didn't want to talk about. <laughs> yes. Maybe that makes him Gamora. Yeah. Tra- Travis says, ah, now we got it. <laughs> do you think we'll see Stallone uh, as Starhawk in Guardians 3? So, I mean, what do you think they do with those guys? Do you think they do anything, or is yeah. that it? Dude, it was I so crazy that they... I think they see him again and again, but not as, like, a whole. I wish that they would, but there's no way to elegantly bring back Sly Stallone and Wing Rames into another movie. Wing that- Rames? Oh, come oh, on. Fuck off, you all. totally fuck. do another By cameo. By repeating it, you kill it. You kill it when you <laughs> repeat it. You just let me say it and then just, like, have it go. No, just leave it alone. Just let it drop. It's the- I was literally the one that left it alone, and you No, like, you reset said it. It, it like an asshole. So, yes, I think they will get another scene in Guardians 3. Yeah. I don't think it's, they it's will James Gunn, become of course, there. playing a huge part, but I would not be surprised if there was news playing on some planet or something talking about something they did or some other inserted scene that kind of establishes they're still out there i just think that there's too much money casting that crew to not have more than a scene in a movie like what would they 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 would be wasted doing like one scene but people they're not worth doing a whole like couple scenes over so like most things there's all sorts of craziness in terms of contracts where Mm -hmm. it's not that expensive to say we want to bring you out here for a day to film a scene you don't pay them the same amount of money as you pay the people who are in multiple scenes Mm -hmm. that take the six months to shoot and all that okay charlie tell me more about the contracts of hollywood actors (laughs) so the point i'm trying to make is as much as you go, oh, they probably had to pay him a lot of money. I doubt it was some crazy amount that moved the budget on a $200 million movie. Uh, okay, fair play. Yes and no. What I'm saying is that they had to pay him a lot of money comparatively. If they only had him out, to your point, for a day or two, they probably had to pay him way more than they would Stallone? pay any other actor. Yeah. They probably paid Miley Cyrus more than any of those people. Stallone's not a name. Stallone's not getting a huge payday. Stallone is a huge name. He's not, a fucking not, god like Hasselhoff. Not today. Wait, wait, wait. You, you, think that, you think that they paid Miley Cyrus more than Sylvester Stallone? Absolutely. Miley is a cricket. What I, the I, fuck does I, I that would almost, even, I would I almost guarantee you Miley Cyrus got paid more than Sylvester Stallone. I mean, she was technically the, in a movie for like the eight, thing is, is, eight is, seconds, is, so is, maybe is, not. But I think she are, got paid... Uh, 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 what it is is there's a there so it's negotiating their contracts but basically actors get a day rate a base day rate ever for however like if they're being on there kevin where why didn't you show up tonight (laughs) we're all idiots talking about this shit that we don't know anything about we need charlie and brock you should listen to them they're 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 preaching about the hollywood system tell me more about the day rate brock they get it they get (laughs) jesus christ (laughs) why (laughs) <laughs> why do you even <laughs> actors are paid on a day rate they're part of, a, they're part of the screen actors some, guild some some are the screen actors guild for the uh, actors that are in it they get paid a base day rate now based on the contract that their manager negotiated with the studio they can get paid more per day but the amount that they paid sylvester Stallone <laughs> to come out and work the one or two days for his cameo is like Charlie said, not as much as you think it is in comparison to what um, Chris Pratt got paid or what you know top billing people get paid. Yes, yeah. he's going to get more, but he's not going to get anything like, again. He did that's not, not get more than Chris Pratt. No, he didn't get more than Chris Pratt. That's what but he's the saying. thing is, is is his day rate was yes a higher day rate than what is standard. But that's basically based on what. But the other thing is, I heard reports that Stallone wanted to do this, and he wanted to be in. In a super, I'm sure thing. anyone would want to be in these because it's just a, it's an infinite payday. Mm. <clears throat> these right. things will be replayed I mean, forever. Daniel Craig is like, I was in Star Wars, and we never see his face. Yeah, but that you get well, that, that you get so checks every yeah. every month yeah. for the rest of his life, you know. And that's actors will take little gigs. Yeah, just they'll, to have they'll some do. Money. I they'll want do. a check for the rest of my life. Why don't we get that from the comic book store? Tell me that. It'll be in Guardians Three. Oh, okay, fine, I'll try. <laughs> As right, Rocket next Raccoon stand in. <laughs> Brandon asks, that can't talk. It's be a weird movie. Brandon, Bradley Cooper's voice, fuck you, and then Toby's voice, Wing Rames. <laughs> Brandon asks, 
Do you have any tape? <laughs> His name is Charlie Twenty One. I uh, see you missed it. Brandon asked. No, no, I got. Do you have I, any I tape? heard it. It was funny uh, in the movie. Despite your complaining, it did go on too long. It's still funny when he says it. Okay. Lester asks, any good cosmic Marvel comic book recommendations? And yeah, we talk yeah, about these all the time. Like yeah, we do. Literally Don't everything everything featuring Guardians of the Galaxy prior to the movie being released is great. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. accurate. And all I the Abnet stuff. Yeah, Abnet and Landing era. They even thank them in the credits. Yep, yep. Um, okay, by the way, I want to like throw some uh, not popular You don't like the I Am Groot credits? What the fuck? When did I say that I don't like the... Uh, what, what, that was, that was a little weird. No, what? No, it was Why? great. That was oh, weird. the Teenage Groot? No. no. The Groot credits. They during kept, the credits. During the credits, I Am Groot popped up over certain things. So it was oh, I Am Groot. Yeah, I loved that. That was hilarious. This person in the credits. Okay. Oh, Higgins didn't like it. Spoiler to nobody. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so... <laughs> Groot hater. Uh, a not popular opinion that I will throw out in terms of cosmic events was the Black Vortex stuff. I actually liked uh, more more than it deserved to be liked. Um, it's X-Men Guardians. Yeah, X-Men crossover. Guardians. X-Men it's Guardians crossover. X-Men. You're already um, biased. Yeah, like that stops anybody at this so table. There's, uh, there, I, I liked it. It wasn't great, but it was fun. It was enjoyable. If you go back quite a while, yeah. But if you're gonna go X, Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar sure, Empire oh, is dude. much better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar Empire is better than the Abnett Landing Guardians. Oh, I said it. If you go back, if you want to go back uh, to a much earlier episode where we review, uh, I. Uh, I'm said Identity Crisis, where, where we review um, Infinity Gauntlet. I do talk about uh, the connective series they have prior to that, which has Thanos Quest and the Silver Surfer issues. I think it's just called The Return of Thanos. Yeah, it's a yeah. Silver Surfer. Yeah, arc. but that's like the gold standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the set. That's like that's like yeah. the Claremont burn of y- the Marvel space that's stuff. That's the pretty yeah. omnibus. Now, there are Do they two... have an omnibus of that? Of Infinity Gauntlet? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the Marvel, huge. The Marvel Masterworks, I believe it's Warlock Volume 2. Two and three are all the Jim Starlin Warlock stuff. All the Thanos. That's that's all like the lead up to Guardians. I don't know if those are in print anymore. Um, but there was a there was a couple. All, there was a lot of Adam Warlock. Uh, How would they not have those in print right now? The Marvel Master. Well, they'll come as an epic collection. The Masterworks. A lot of them are out of print because I I think they 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 wanted to get those numbers off. Yeah. Uh, we got a nice big uh, uh, a quick review here from Cisco. Let me read this real quick. Um, he said to give it a solid seven, not as good as the first. It seemed like a less subtle version of a Disney movie. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Rocket was unlikable, in my opinion. Mm, not my opinion. Certain jokes, Taser Face, went on way too long. Yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, almost every character dealt with family-related issues. Oh, here yeah, we go. that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Here we go, Toby. Which seemed redundant and overt. Seemed like James Gunn's version of a Vin Diesel family shtick from Fast and the Furious. Well, family shtick and Fast and the Furious is really overdone. Yeah. Actors uh, did what great the with what like they had to work with. Fast and the Furious invented that? What, what do you even mean? No, they overuse it. I disagree. I love it. I love it. It's been popular since the Fantastic Four were fucking invented. I love the whole family <laughs> thing. They do it poorly in Mission Impossible 3. Have you seen the Bambi trailer? <laughs> what the fuck? You know that I don't watch trailers, and what the fuck, Bambi? I'll have to show you. It's freaking awesome. You will not show me. I will, I will not definitely watch it. show you. You he said, uh, uh, might he said try. could have done it without all, all the stingers, but the Adam Morlock was the best. Now, I love the, I, I love the CW superhero shows right oh, wow didn't see that coming <laughs> however however if i have to sit through three scenes in every episode of flash and arrow again where they're like i don't know if i can trust you again i'm like oh, for oh. fuck's sake people <laughs> you know that's going to be another four seasons of that shit like right? how many times you have to have these you remember same the fucking Clark Kent want to shit that happened for six years? I know, I know. Seven years maybe until so, she became a the witch last episode for no of Flash, reason. right? Was great. The reveal was great. I'm going to talk about it here. Yeah, but, uh, seen it. but the middle of the episode, I'm like, yeah, okay, Barry, come on. Like, let's get this fucking plot moving. So I, I get what you're saying about kind of them running that, you know, that family thing. They just keep going over and over and over. It's like, the DC well, they want to keep reminding the, the audience about it. Yeah, yeah. I liked it in Guardians, though. Uh, I liked it in Guardians too. I loved it in Guardians. The Nebula, Nebula, Gamora stuff was oh, fucking yeah. great. Even though I, I don't like how they made all the storylines so disparate. Yeah, I, I liked uh, the separate, the separate understanding. Groot is on there with Mantis talking about his like 
you know, his wife and what, like, what, Not you know, ter- Drax. Sorry, Drax. Sorry, yep. Um, and what uh, sort of gets him hard. And, you know, Gamora's like out there on the plains and she has like a cool space cavern battle with her sister. And then they reconcile, kind of. And it ends with an awkward, you know, nebula one liner, which is annoying. But like 99% of that scene was awesome. Um, the Kate. fucking, like, <laughs> Uh, sorry, you go. You, I was just gonna say, in case you answered your question. Uh, Dollar Bang asks, favorite Kurt Russell film? Ha! Big Trouble in Little China, baby. There you go. There you go. No, Tango and Cash. No, Big <laughs> Trouble. I actually like that one too. It was great. It was great. Um, well, not a sly and was it and, and Kurt in the reunion. Oh, no, that's that. Uh, that's right. That's some, that's uh, uh, my I actual favorite confused. Kurt Russell movie from before I saw Tango and Cash was Overboard. Oh yeah, Overboard. <laughs> I was like, Overboard this was guy awesome. is star material. I'm going to see him when I'm in my mid-30s, and he's going to be a planet, and it's going to be awesome. Joel and asked, is like, who are you? And he's like, I love you. And she's like, I love you too. Joel asked, did you like Ego as a Celestial? I mean, we know Charlie's answer. For me, I don't it, I don't care. The Celestials are this, such a nebulous space god thing in the Marvel Universe. Well, the, the, I, I couldn't name a Celestial if you asked me right now. Like, I've... No, the, the, I mean... Well, the, but do they even have names? They, they're just the so they show up occasionally and do random shit occasionally. It's like, yeah, I, I don't care if they want to lump every. If you want to call Galactus a celestial, to me, I don't care. So it, all the god creatures is celestial. I right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, all the god creatures are what? Uh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way, I mean, I mean, again, I if that's what they want to do, I don't care. Charlie. Didn't seem to like it, but I, w- I wouldn't have taken so much issue if I, they didn't literally show Celestials in the first Guardians being these giant yeah, beings. Yeah, I think that. Well, they're... they never specifically called it a Celestial. That's but true, but yes, there is the there are certain stories and imagery in my head when you talk Celestial. They have a particular definition in the comic books that I don't think you needed to muddy the term with ego. Right. There, there, uh, it just it didn't seem necessary. This to is totally nitpicking, but there's nothing that like they brought to the movie by calling him a celestial. They only risk taking things away. Like, yeah, well, that's uh, true. Uh, like, I can't think of nobody c- knows what a celestial is except for us. Exactly. And then we know it's not ego. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> that was, you know, annoying. It might be a little well, aggressive. Unless they're gonna call. Thanos a celestial and Galactus a celestial and, and if they and, call and, them that then oh, I'm like what the fuck Stargate oh, here's Stargate a, is my answer here's a question did we actually see Eternity in that movie because if there's the there's scene a, yeah, yeah, where yeah, he yeah. you see it in his eyes I think that's up to us I think that's like the Sopranos series finale <laughs> I think that it's, it's up to the viewer because you see in Star Lord's eyes you see the, like the whole the star field picture yep. is that is that actually supposed to be Eternity again well, he it, says the words he says Eternity exactly right, right. he's yeah. like I could see Eternity right yeah. or something like that yeah again Eternity is not a celestial but if they want to call it turn if they want to just lump no, wait, everything what? into no so, celestials have nothing to do with that scene. No, but what I'm saying is, if they want to lump all these into being all of these characters are celestials, right? I think I they're celestials, is, and I think Marvel Eternity call is separate. Now? Yeah. Hmm? What does Marvel call them now? They're all they're they're all separate things. They're celestials are, together with sort of cosmic entities. Okay, I mean, my, it depends because the Ultimates two kills a different one off every episode. I mean, my so, my knowledge of my knowledge of the Celestials is super limited. I mean, I haven't read a lot of the Thor issues they were from, and, and uh, some of the FF stuff. But they're just these big giant like well, the, they kind of look, they kind of look like the Destroyer yeah. armor almost. Yeah. Like they're just these huge armored beings. Didn't, celestial didn't, didn't beings. Didn't Jack Kirby like was well, that one of those in Thor one? Create both. Uh, the well, destroyer, yeah, was. the destroyer yeah. was. armor was, but I mean, but, just because that boxy art, Jr. Jr. status, I'm pretty was sure like, Kirby created the Celestials. Oh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. he did. And I mean, but what I'm saying they, is, he also had, created the destroyer, like yeah, a, a yeah. humongous robot. There's only so many but ways not, you could but, draw that, right? But destroyer is not eighty thousand feet tall. Yeah. yeah. So let's just, right, so but let's if you're Jack giant. Kirby in the fucking '60s, you draw one that looks like the other. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah, scaled yeah, yeah. But, in, yeah. The, but the Celestials have be- become like humanized, or they have powers. Like they've reduced them down because Neil Gaiman reduced them down to um, the smaller form in his run Wait, it, of for the Eternals. For Eternals, yeah, well, uh, I think that book. Wait, kind I of, didn't know that Neil Gaiman wrote 
Yeah, Neil Gaiman wrote the, the any Marvel the, books. Yeah, he wrote yeah. The Eternals. Oh yeah, he, he did sixteen oh two. Yeah, he did Eternals. Multiple. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I find Don't that Eternals no run. Face. That Eternals run, I think, is Turtles run. In Eternals, Eternals run. Oh, like, yeah, you, and not n- writing a fucking Turtles. Neil Gaiman's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think that Eternals run is pretty. Oh, like I would have known about that. Pretty self-contained. I don't. I don't. Yeah, know if they're but, really getting along. So, <laughs> yes, Celestials don't necessarily have a huge plethora of known information about them, but that tends to be because they kind of sit outside of the mundane, mm-hmm. the way a lot of the cosmic entities do. Yeah. But they do seem to have a specific purpose within the universe and a game plan for the universe. <sighs> So help me God, if Infinity War doesn't have the scene from Infinity Gauntlet where Thanos is standing there and like, and the Living Tribunal, Eternity, yeah. the Celestials, Galactus, um, what's the well, half white half black guy in between her? Don't say Galactus, unfortunately. But you know what I mean. But all those guys are coming at him. Yeah. And he's just like blink goodbye. Like that's the greatest scene. So oh. You heard it here first. Higgins already gives a shrug face to Avengers <laughs> Part 1. Because it doesn't have. This is what he said six months ago about Baby Groot. Ugh, if there's more than five minutes of Baby Groot, I'm giving this movie one star. And, oh, here, here he goes. One star. I'm saying I want this. Not that I don't want no, this. No, I'm saying that they won't have that scene and you will therefore carry out your promise no. to not like it. <laughs> no, I want them to have it. I'm I mean, saying that they will not have that one scene, and you will fucking like carry your little vendetta. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, next question. Uh, problematic cartoon asks thoughts on the new Guardians of the Galaxy comic that just launched along with it. I, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, um, but I do love uh, Adam uh, um, Warlock, uh, Aaron Cooter, Strange. Uh, the <laughs> artist. I love him. Um, it, uh, I read it. Yeah, you didn't like it, huh? No, I yeah. mean, his, I, I like the artist, but I don't think it w- it fits very well it's, with the, it's the book. It's not hopeless. It's um, it's not hopeless. It's not that it's uh, hopeless. It's who's um, a, who's the writer on it? Uh, Jerry Duggan, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm very hit or miss with that guy. Yeah. It, well, the thing is, is I I think the biggest issue that I've had, especially with any Guardian stuff post um, Abbott and Landing, no, but post the yeah, post the movies is, yeah. is 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 like the original Guardians that was Valentino's. That was the the whole kind of '90s Valentino. Like that was the well, thing. The was, '90s stuff. Yeah. 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 And then Abbott and Landing came in and breathed this really awesome, like, fresh air to these characters and made, you know, the the space cosmo, the space stuff for Marvel significant at a time when, um, you know, a lot of people were getting their space stuff from everything that was going on with Green Lantern and the John stuff. Well, I well, think in general they did a very good job of sort of counterbalancing everything that was going on on Earth. Earth, yeah. They it, gave... They, they, this other sort of avenue to all yeah. the cosmic characters to be doing something yeah, significant. Yeah, and, and, and because, of, because of that, because there was... I mean, it didn't necessarily end the best, um, especially, like, with Thanos. Well, because it went on to the other books. It well, went yeah, on to the other events. Yeah, um, but when Bendis took over, and, like you said, it kind of... They took the movie and kind of spun it in there... I think that's where where the comics really suffered. And they brought in Angela and all that. Remember when yeah. Angela was on the team? Ugh. Terrible. What the fuck is wrong so, with Angela? She's like a nothing. She's like a non-entity. What, 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 what are you ugh about Angela? They made Angela? such a big deal she's, about she's, bringing she's Angela half-naked, in. so he's in trouble with his wife, so he has to go, ugh. They made a big deal about bringing Angela in, and then they did nothing with her, and they made her Thor's sister, but not really, and then it's just like, what? Okay, and this is done. Yeah. So, in general... I do not dislike the Bendis run of Guardians of the Galaxy. I just <laughs> don't necessarily hold it up. Like, it doesn't hold a candle to the Abnett Landing Guardians for me. It just, it's not a definitive run. But if you're starving for Guardians stuff to read, I yep. would not yep. steer you away from the Bendis stuff. It was still a fun read. Uh, Hiram asks, is Adam a big deal? And yeah, we talked about that. He's Adam Warlock. So mm-hmm. a, you definitely want to look that up. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on with that character. Not, we just hope he's not at that millennial. Um, and finally, <coughs> I have a nice long email here from Julian Titus. We're going to read that, our good friend Julian. Before right. I want to say I did one of those quizzes where what characters you are. I got Groot. Oh, no. I, I got Rocket. Yeah. And it says, 
you have a plan for every situation, I agree. And then it says, but you just go in guns blazing anyway. That's why I said you're a rocket. Yeah. That's fucking great. You are rocket. I love how we totally skipped Craig's question. We just sort of like. What, what's Craig's question? No, we said. I said you're rocket. We didn't give Brock anybody, though. Uh, he's Drax. Drax. <laughs> I specifically I said you, like, you guys are just going to. claim Drax, though. <laughs> you guys are just going to give me Drax because you gave Charlie baby Groot. Uh, no, no, he's no. adult Groot. Toby and then we gave, actually figured Toby out gave, which one of you is the woman and the man. No, so. Toby gave Charlie Groot. I Fight like a married Char- couple. I think you that, do. I think that Charlie. <laughs> you just gotta have to have fight. a little dance and together. So I think that Charlie is Drax, Ooh. which makes you the millennial. Ah, uh, what millennial? The, the, the senator, gold boy, the golden chick. You mean Adam Warlock? No, the chick. No, her. the Guardians team. Her. You're her. You're her. Oh, You're her. Anyway. All right, so Julian says, Hello, Julian. <laughs> is anyone getting frustrated with the way Thanos is being handled in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Oh, is no, but I'm frustrated. I'm still trying to find my pants. No, I'm kidding. Hold on. <laughs> he was poorly introducing Guardians 1. What? Uh, this is just what he said. Oh, I no, love that Julian, scene. Julian, what are you... What? Well, he does sit in Poorly fucking, introduced? He does sit in a chair He has the, one of the most fucking epic introductions in the fucking history of cinema. What yeah, the? but what does he do okay, sit in a so chair let, in let's space? Let's finish hearing the question. Yeah. All right. No, he just said poorly introduced. All right, no pants, boy. Poorly Continue developed. on. He says, and his name is barely mentioned in passing in Guardians 2, the movie that probably should have introduced him as a main, main antagonist. Does this mean that no one besides Gamora and Nebula will have any knowledge of the Mad Titan by Infinity War? Because I don't, I mean, he may be in Thor. We don't know. Uh, uh, it's bad enough that Adam Warlock is going to miss the big showdown. James Gunn confirmed he will debut after Infinity War, which Guardians 3 would be after Infinity War. Oh. But they know should be at least established by Avengers 3 as Loki was by the first film, which I, 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 I may kind of agree with. But I, I think he could very well be in Thor in, in, in a bigger fashion than we understand. But between Thor and Avengers, there's nothing, right? Is that... I think that's right. Thor but and Avengers? I think that's right. So my... The my Speedermon overall, is before with Thor? My overall feeling is as much as we want him to be seen as a threat before Avengers, I think the quote-unquote part one, which I know they're not part one and part two anymore from what I recall. Oh, wait, yeah. what? Yeah. They're not? No. But, but Oh, sorry. Black Panther is in between them. Ah, yeah. But I do believe that the first movie is not going to resolve the Thanos stuff at all. And he's definitely not showing up in the Black Panther like, movie. I think they are going to completely and totally set him up in the first movie. What and if the first Avengers movie is just second. a Thanos movie? What is in between Avengers 1 and Avengers 2? Is it one Captain year apart Marvel? or two years apart? Captain it's Marvel? one year apart, isn't it? Isn't it Captain well, Marvel so there should be team? one movie in between. I'm sure they're shooting call, it together. Yeah. Well, Come so on, Ryan. Which movie type is faster? It? Ah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, sure the current it, lineup. I'm sure they're filming it together. Oh, get a new ISP. I believe the current lineup. We have Guardians, we have Spider-Man, we have Thor Ragnarok, we have Black Panther, we have Avengers Infinity War, then yeah. Ant-Man. Wait, Spidey is next? I believe Ant-Man it's, 2 is the one in between Avengers and Avengers I believe 2. It's <laughs> Ant- I believe it's Ant-Man, Captain Marvel, and Avengers uh, 4. Yeah, I believe that's right. Are they calling it Avengers 4? Well, uh, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, they're not doing. They, they got rid of the parts, right? Well, they've. Wait, wait, so they, they made did? it okay. Oh, Charlie knows. Spoiler territory here, based on comments and oh, that I kind hate of spoilers. stuff. I'm gonna go step outside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spoil it, Bryson. You can't step outside. No, um, there was some general comments made by one of the members of the Guardians cast recently that said they'd be filming Infinity War and then going back to film Infinity Gauntlet. Suggesting that the first one's going to be called Infinity oh. War, which will probably end with Thanos getting the glove with all the gems, leading oh. into Infinity Gauntlet for the last oh. one. So I can deal with that. Which is why, that if, cool. if that's the way they're handling it, I don't think you need to set up Thanos before Avengers because if it's just well, the thing is, you need to give us a little breath of Thanos because the last time we actually saw him was at the end. If of you want to give an entire movie War, of right? Basically having Thanos appear in all these different places where the gems are and kicking the ass and explaining why this larger group has to come together to deal with him, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with if you get a 20-minute scene of the Guardians reacting to the fact that he just took the gem from the Nova Corps and 
a 20 million scene with thor reacting to the fact that he just got the one that the collector was given a 20 minute scene like the gems are all over the place oh my god dude this movie could be the greatest thing ever gifted upon mankind hyperbole no or the worst (sighs) or the best all right i think that's it that would be double best oh it's julian's question (laughs) <laughs> we're talking about Thanos oh okay yeah, that's right Sorry. yeah I, I mean and, and I I pretty much agree with them I, I, I think it'd be weird if they just drop him in as the villain without a lot of backup but again or backstory but again it, it may be Thor I mean I, I think I, I think well, there's a little disappointment that he wasn't somewhat attached to the Guardians film I thought he was going to be all over this movie like, well so I was really surprised oh more disappointment I, I guess, from Higgins I guess for me, the, Not disappointed. the, the strangest thing, and this is kind of good in a way, is when you think about it, the first reveal to set up Thanos was Avengers 1. We've been waiting for the big Thanos yeah. part for, what will it be, <laughs> six years, eight years? Uh, 2012 to 2018, yeah, six years, yeah, yeah. 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 Avengers was 2012? Well, well, the right. thing is, is we got the six we got years the... worth of movies to finally get the payoff of that <laughs> first scene in Avengers 1. Well, where has he been? He's been in Avengers. He's been in Guardians. He was in... See, the end of Civil War, just putting his hand in the End of Civil War. Was that it? That was it. Yeah. But the thing is, is we get like a, a tease, and then we get a little bit in Guardians, and then we get another tease, and in the movie that you'd think he would be in a little bit, even if it's just another tease or a little bit, a little more information, we didn't get anything. So I think that, like you said, Thor could be the one where we see him again. Yeah. Because I don't see any reason for him to be a Black Panther. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't. I don't. If he was, a, if he was a Black Panther, that'd be super weird. <laughs> I don't. I don't see why he would be in there. Again, Thor makes sense. It's in outer space. As I'm playing a Hulk or whatever. But but Black Panther would be super hey, weird. Spoiler alert. Um. Yeah, I'm excited. I don't know where he'll show up next. But if they are. Doing it so that they establish him in Aven- uh, Infinity. What did you say? War in- and then Infinity Gauntlet. War. They establish him as a villain to be reckoned with, and then they actually have the fucking like great fight or whatever. Because as loath as I am, so listeners of the podcast probably just assume. And you're right. I love Harry Potter. I uh, didn't see that coming, did you? Um, I thought that they did the last movie of Harry Potter very well in terms of the Voldemort stuff. They didn't have him have a fucking throwdown fight with the big bad in the first of the one part, two part last movie. They saved it for the second of the two movies. Um, and if they do the fucking same thing here, then I think that, that they'd be better for it. Um, introduce him in the first movie and, and have the throwdown fight in the second movie. You're welcome. That sounds Disney. good to me. I'm just, I'm just like, when shouldn't they I be reversed? I love how none of you listened to the at all what I said. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, yeah, it was really great. Well, well, was actually, actually, you know, anytime you hear Thanos wins, it, what, what anytime you, you hear Higgins say to me say like, oh, "Sounds good to me," <laughs> <laughs> you just know that he's playing <laughs> Cookie Clicker. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was playing Cookie Clicker. Um, yeah, yeah, I stopped recording ten minutes ago. No, 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 no. We are <laughs> done. Guardians of the Galaxy. Later. I'm pretty sure we've. I'm pretty close to the full run time of the do, movie. Uh, you didn't even get to do your numbers, how much it made, your data. No, we talked no, about that. We're not going to do we that. talked about that briefly. Either way, we did? we, we, did? we no, we we've didn't. been recording this podcast oh, for longer than Guardians Two, I'm sure. So we did, yes. But there hasn't been uh, like a fraction of the vitriol spewed with any of the other movies. That- Guardians Two, as of today, is 156 million domestic, with I think 140. 45 opening weekend, if my math, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, 145 million domestic. Uh, 285 foreign, it opened 100 million foreign opening weekend for a grand total of 441 already, and we're only, we're not even a weekend. So, uh, I assume that that's good, but I literally don't know what yeah, these huge. numbers compared it's, it's to. huge. Okay. Um, I wonder if it'll hit a billion. It's going to come close. I think it'll get real close, depending on the international market, depending on how well it does there. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think it'll. Um, I, I think it has a chance to hit a billion. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on it in the next couple of weeks. See if it, it, see do if we it know about its expectations. Is it expected to hit a billion? What did, what did Guardians one do? Did it do a billion? Mm, no, no. Nothing. But it did like seven hundred million or some crazy number like that. 
Yeah, it did. But this one had like X times the number of like overseas dollar shares. Oh, I think it's entirely possible Guardians will hit a billion. It did 773. Yeah, it it, it did 333 domestic, 444, and, and it's already more than halfway in, in less than a week to both those numbers. So... I have a feeling it's gonna, okay. yeah, it's gonna go big. Yeah, because opening weekend was ninety four. It did one hundred and forty five opening weekend for two. Ooh, so it did nearly fifty million more opening weekend here. Okay, okay. But it could be, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna compare it to Batman v Superman in, 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 a, in, a, in a content way. But Batman v Superman had a humongous opening weekend and then plummeted. Week two, three, four, Guardians did consecutive. Every week yeah. was huge Word of for mouth that. Was was yeah, for the first Guardian. And so we may front load a bit. Because the saturation of jokes is actually awesome. <laughs> we may front load a bit, and the drop off could be steeper than Guardians One. Because I think Guardians One had a very good. Uh, what's your what's the number they call it? The, the oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, fuck. The, just 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 the attrition rate on Guardians One was super low. Yeah, I know low. what you mean. Uh, Guardians Two would probably be higher. I only but... remember that word when I'm throwing shade at DC movies. <laughs> <laughs> So. What, what what the fuck is that? Oh man, what is that? Is yeah, that I can't Sam remember. Speak? Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, we're gonna thank our good Patreon backers here. We got all sorts of Patreon people for the extra long episode. Charlie, you can go. I mean, you're we're good. It's it's our it's like ten o'clock here. Charlie, get out of here. You love everything. Spoiler alert. If you want to review, okay, by Charlie. fine. I'm gonna run away now. And you can stay all you want. I don't care. <laughs> we have to thank our good friend Julian Titus at the Nerds of All Pants podcast at Pixelbit.com. Oh, Ryan Hess has to preach podcast preach. at SoundCloud.com slash preach podcast. Jody Lawson has Ken in the Triad Comics Anthology at TriadComicsStudio.com. We also want to thank our good friends, Mino Place, Sam Chea, uh, Talon Bray, and Craig Anderson. Thank you guys so very, very thank much. You, thank you. We also have a big list. I want to say thank you. We also have a big list of people we want to thank. Uh, that musical you remember? Huh? you are gone. Uh, we have to thank our... All our, not all of our, we have to thank our, our uh, $5 and up backers for the month. Thank you, everyone that donated to Patreon. Uh, this one helps keep this podcast going. We, uh, we like it. It gives us some uh, money to throw around for some books and Guardians tickets and everything like that. It's great. Uh, let's thank Alex McHale, Matthew Schnapp, Don Kilson, Mark Long, Ivan Liskanik, Brian Morowski, Mason Barber, Matthew Holmes, Dennis Jansen, Paula Schultz, Blake Etheridge, Keith Amaral, David Polanco, uh, Christopher Noyes, Kevin Nguyen, David Sfar, Stephen McLeary. Um, yeah, there he is. Tyler Wil- uh, Wiltis, who Tyler sent us. Oh, yeah, Tyler is awesome. I got some stuff for you guys later. He sent us a nice little care package. He, what? He, he went way out of his way and were able to pick me and Brock up. Wait, copies. Tyler again? Yeah. What the pick fuck? Pick up copies of the um, the. The, the first part of the button, the Batman 21, the con exclusive variant covers. Tyler, you are the fucking man. Mm-hmm. And I got some stuff for you guys, too. Um, Travis, Gary Hollinsby, Tyler's Chris Freeman, John G., John Hoffman, Christopher Stone, Jamie, uh, Sit Comics. That's, not, that's a cool name. Uh, Tim, I like sitting and I like comics. Uh, Timothy, Aaron Wright, Father Dante, Brian Wilson, Nick Harrison, Mike Murphy, Chris Palaki. I, did I already say that name? Kevin Ellis, Christina uh, Tatone, new saver too. Uh, Gordon hey. McKenzie, Stephen Hayden, Anthony Edgar Moreno, and Andrew Cruciari. And go check out Andrew's. Uh, go look up him on um, on uh, YouTube. He does tons and tons of video game uh, um, uh, uh, playthroughs and let's plays. Or yeah. Earthworm Jim t-shirts. Hmm. He'll know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah, Earthworm Jim t-shirt. Yeah, he was on the farm. Yeah, it's that was incredible. great. I love that one. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys all very very much. Uh, we have to uh, uh, remind you, ComicSpiracyPodcast.com, Geekbox on that iTunes. That's where you can find this podcast. Right and review us, please. Uh, Patreon. Oh, wait, I already did that. Uh, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. That is where you can go buy all your digital comics from us. There was a big Guardian sale. I think that's over now. But they've had some really crazy sales recently. Why would they Why would they end that sale? That is they just... run for like a week usually when the movies come out. Right. I think the it ended yesterday. The hot. Like I don't know. We, Toby's... He's I, waving his list. He wants to give you his I, Marvel I list. I worked the entire fucking podcast on this list that I wrote like fucking four times over because I had to figure out my list. Should've, Other than drawing Captain sh- America and watching basketball. worked on this podcast by being on this podcast. Well, I was on this podcast. <laughs> what the fuck? Comic is, uh, <laughs> conspiratorbrock.com. That's Brock's blog and video pull That's list. Fu- it was, it was not what is this podcast? list? Why do you give, what? Save it. It's his Marvel ratings list. The stupid list that you did Just right save, after you watched it. He oh. posted it on the fucking internet. Okay. So, re- post yeah. it on the internet. Huh? I retweet that shit. Fine. He won't because it's all Marvel movies. <laughs> <laughs> 
Brock. <laughs> ConservativeBrock.com. That's Brock's <laughs> blog and video pull list. Wanda is the fourth to mention this. Charlie's Doctor Who podcast, which I'm busy going to record it now because I think he, he rushed out of here right Probably. Quick. Etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hillart. That's my wife's uh, Etsy store. You can buy some stuff. Uh, she worked her ass off on Free Comic Day along with Lane over here, our mm-hmm. friend Raphael, and uh, uh, Yen, one of Le- uh, Leanne's friends. Uh, uh, they did tons of stuff on Free Comic Day. What about me? My chopped liver? You weren't in here. You, here. Yeah, you I called forgot. me on Monday, and we're like, hey, Free Comic Day was this weekend. I forgot. Send me shit. I, I didn't stop. <laughs> Save me shit. Yes, thank you, Brock, <laughs> not Higgins. I did not say send me anything. I, I forgot. I, I it did. was my bad. I, I call in and told Mia Higgins, culpa. pull me all the books. Mia culpa. <laughs> and order me that hot toy. I was not as aggressive yeah, as Tobias. Yet. Or Wing Rams. <laughs> Ryan Higgins, Ryan, Brock Sager, Larson Bryce, Toby XI, and Sandy Dean Chaos Comics Con Store. Those are our Twitter accounts. If you're not following us now, you're not never going to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like, I say this shit every time, but it's just, it's nonsense. No, dude, so I disagree. Uh, like, once every other episode, I get some... I got like nine people harassing me about the Geek Box. The Why? Geek Box episode with my talk about Guardians. Yeah. During this podcast, and I just went, well, we're recording like a two and a half hour podcast about Guardians tonight, so uh, if you want to hear more... lots of more to say tomorrow. Yeah. Wait, 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 when you say harassing you, do you mean that they rightly acknowledge your incorrect opinions? Yes. <laughs> yes. Or, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. You agree. Good, good They people. disagree with my incorrect opinions. But you agree. Or... They dis- he agrees with himself. <laughs> they agree with my incorrect opinions. They agree that they are incorrect. They disagree. Well, they agree with one of those two. Probably Geek- not both. Geekbox. They, they disagree with your opinions, and your opinions are wrong. But if you dis... So Geek- Brock's backing you Geek- up. Geek. Geek- Geekbox, Geek- comedy Geek- 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 shop brain, Geek- all talk podcast, manga machinations. You those are other podcasts. Get out of this podcast. It's my last on podcast our, for a while. On our network. Yes, and Toby is going to be... See you guys. Gone on vacation and work stuff for a few weeks, so yeah. Toby will be gone. Bryce is going to be gone for a few weeks. Yep. Actually, do we want to try the Sandcaster if I'm available next week? It did, shit didn't work at all. Really? Yeah. Did you say Sandcaster? Is that like He Man? I wish. Me too. Maybe, maybe, I have the power. Maybe I'll get you in on <laughs> wow. a. Uh, maybe we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll do. We'll Night Rider He Man, dude. This we'll whole do, maybe we'll do a Skype interview shit. after your uh, Doctor Who. Uh, after your yeah, your Doctor Who thing. Oh. Good. Hopefully, yeah. I get in yeah, because we'll, they're shutting it down. Yeah, we'll, maybe we'll I'm see if you can play hit you my up. tourist card. I flew all the way here. I want to see the fucking TARDIS. <laughs> show me your fucking TARDIS, and they show me something. No, that's not the TARDIS I was looking for. All right, you mean that? You know that means something different, though. You know it's bigger on the inside, right? Uh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode. Thank you guys all very much that's for not listening. A joke an old man so, Saldano was so unbelievably. Good.